I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start this. It can happen at any time. <laughs> <laughs> now we're ready to podcast. And you will like it. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers, hang on. <laughs> We just wait until you take the largest possible bite of food, and then we just go. I was in the middle of eating a leftover corned beef sandwich. It was delicious. A leftover corned beef? Can you, can you make better choices, please, for me? <laughs> go fuck yourself, I, Nova. I, I, need, I need both of you to stay yourself, alive Nova. so that I can continue oh, to pay rent. Go fuck yourself, <laughs> Nova. I'm going to eat this sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't gotten takeout in several weeks, so I decided, uh, like, two days ago to get a pizza. And now I'm just uh, eating lots of leftover pizza. And it, Yeah, it is from Fiesta. You, oh, you're a moron. Yeah, that was dumb. That was dumb. I shouldn't have done that. I would have been better off making food at home, and it would have tasted better, and I would feel better, and my refrigerator would be less crowded. Um, R.I.P. to a real know, one. What you gonna uh, do? New style. New style no longer Doesn't, exists, yeah. That's why I said R.I.P. to a real one. Oh my god, their Instagram is still there. <laughs> they killed it with its eyes open. <laughs> Hi, Rin. Hi. Thank you for my forehead kiss. You're welcome. We're in the middle of recording. New style? That place was terrible. That, what, that place was very good. The cheesesteaks were delicious. They were so bad. They were good. Really, Go fuck really yourself. solid cheesesteak for $6. Really good cheesesteaks, yeah. No. Okay. Um, welcome to Well, There's Your Problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters uh, and the disaster shows that are our respective apartments with slides. Um, I'm Justin Rosnick, the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am November Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. I'm, I have like three fucking uni essays due this week because I'm nominally a full-time student as well as doing three podcasts. I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm in hell. That's why the podcast is so late. I'm so sorry. Yay, Liam. <laughs> yay, Liam. I don't even feel like saying yay, Liam. Now I'm just sad. Uh, hi, I'm Liam McAnderson. My uh, pronouns are he and him. And yeah, we'll get a bonus out. Sorry, there's a lot. There's been a lot of shit going on behind the scenes. I mean, I feel like I'm dying. Like, what do you want from me? Also, to it's do a my job is... to do the thing you pay me two dollars a month to do? The Impossible. The podcast is not that late. It's just it suppressed our the algorithm suppressed our last episode because That's we had talked about important news items that needed to be talked about. <laughs> this is true. This is true. We have, we have a guest. We have a guest. Returning champion, please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Victoria Scott. My pronouns are she and her. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we got Victoria back. You know, it's am I be a winning now? Yes. yes, yes, yes. You don't win it. Well, there's your problem. Just lose a little less. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Bellatra in that respect. I'm never gonna stop talking about that video game. Fucking, this is possibly okay. related to the fact that I have a time crisis of uh like work to do is also the fact that i started playing a video game that famously takes up a lot of your time <laughs> i have like possibly like attention deficit disorder that's, that's okay. what's called a pro gamer move <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, what you see on the screen in front of you is an advertisement for an electric car that's beautiful Baker Electric Vehicles, the aristocrats of motor every need of the society woman. You, you may notice that this is distinctively not a modern electric vehicle, such as a Tesla. I mean, it oh, has look, a Roz, like, you can concrete. learn to run the Baker in 20 minutes. See, that's something you can't do because you don't know how to drive because you leave us stranded at a goddamn <laughs> fucking Tim Hortons for no apparent reason. Very, yeah, very, very it's few not a things. Tim Hortons. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it Tim, what was it? Was it a Duncan? It was no, a Tim Hortons. No, it was a couch tard. <laughs> I missed no, you guys. No, it was a Tim Hortons. It's definitely the couch tard. Okay. Very, but... very, very few things in our society claim these days to meet every need of the society woman. It's basically it's just, it's me, um, and like some beauty products and the Hitachi magic wand. The, okay. Well, uh, yeah, very similar operating principles there. What is a Hitachi magic wand if not an electric vehicle? Yes, Thank you. true. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Hitachi makes many electric vehicles, actually, but most of them are trains, so... Hmm. No, most of them are vibrators, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right for our handsome booklet. Well, our, Hitachi doesn't make the magic wand anymore. I thought they spun that off. 
Well, they ke they keep trying to, but it really embarrasses them that they made something so good at like giving people orgasms. So like anytime they they, they keep trying to take their name off of it. Uh, and they keep trying to spin it off, and then it, it always seems to come back to them, is my understanding. Uh, well, you know, I mean, that's that's what happens when you're, you Can know... you imagine being the guy who invented it, and just like, yeah, I paid for this beach house entirely in, in, in vibrator sales? I mean, how many people get to say that they paid for their beach house in, like, appreciably making people's lives better? Like, fucking doctors barely get to do that. Yeah. True. Yeah, Manufacture... It's, it's, uh... You know, it's it's like uh, it's like uh, Mikhail Kalashnikov. You know, I wanted to make agricultural equipment, but I had to make the vibrator instead. <laughs> I was too good at making rifles. <laughs> I, I'm looking at history. Uh, it doesn't claim a single inventor. Hmm. No, I was. Did, uh, that, the Kitachi is a big conglomerate. It's probably made by committee. Um, surpri surprisingly old. It was patented in 1968. The, the guy, the guys who made it, they probably were like working on that one day, and then the next day they were working on like a a giant drag line excavator, and then another week they were working on like um I don't know some kind of steel fabrication like rolling plant or something. You know, Hitachi hey, does everything. Nineteen nineteen sixty eight. Fucking Ladybird Johnson could have. Uh... <laughs> oh. how, how does it compare with Jumbo? <laughs> I'm sorry, you are getting a two trans women podcast. <laughs> no, what we're here to talk about are electric vehicles, the history thereof, uh, some of the problems, a whole bunch. It's a Victoria's episode. Victoria, you explain what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I just yes, lecture. Electric vehicles are electric vehicles do not have to be an engineering disaster, but they largely have been. Um, and I've been doing a lot of stories recently uh, about how electric vehicles work. And the entire history of them. And what I have found is that basically everything that is happening today has already happened uh, through two distinct periods in American history. Um, we are repeating the that, exact uh, same mistakes. Would you say that time is a flat circle? Time is a flat circle and all the problems are caused by capitalism. So hmm. I'm here sort of as like a, here's an interesting breakdown of this. I think, I think actually Roz probably has more disasters per se. But yeah, the disaster I, I, parts at the end. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think yeah. that like I think that some background might be helpful to understand why everything sucks so much. Are we, are we fucking going to Drake's Mill again? Because if we are, uh, I'm not going back there. We do go by Hell way of there. Um, but the other thing going is going to what Drake's Wells, Don't worry about it. where they discovered oil. Discovered. Oh. Discovered. Yeah. Recur <laughs> recurring, recurring Justin recurring inserted villain. slide, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, villain uh, as well. Look, I, but before we do that, we should do the goddamn news. Every everyone fucking told you that you can't airdrop aid into Gaza. It will not work. It's not enough. And then you. Did it anyway. Yeah, so this is one of those things. Okay, so over the past couple weeks at this point now, um, the United States, the Jordanian Air Force, a few other people have been, uh, uh, since trucks can't get into Gaza anymore because there's idiots protesting outside the gates, um, you know, uh, they've we've been airdropping minuscule amounts of aid into Gaza. And of yeah, course- There's the a couple of sea routes now, ostensibly. We'll see how those do. The thing about- Think about airdrops are they're not very precise and they're not very accurate. Um, yeah, that's so first. almost immediately after this airdrop started, um, a parachute failed and a pallet dropped on like five pe killed five people and uh, injured 10 people. Um, yeah. So I this airdrop is not going very well. No, and people compare it to like the Berlin airlift, and it's like the Berlin airlift had ten times the amount of resources, and the planes could land. Planes could land. Um, they had this thing called right. Tempelhof Airport. Yeah, it's the key <laughs> thing. Yeah, the, the 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 only thing to do is to fucking uh, reopen the airport in Gaza. I guess no. The only thing to do is to successfully bully Israel into opening the land crossings. Yeah, because the airport um, has like um, has like olive trees on it now. Um, oh my God. you know, so essentially, um, yeah, so we started these airdrops, um, we're using, this is according to Twitter user, captain underscore hat. These are LCAT, LCADs 
parachutes. That's a low cost aerial delivery system. They well, cost low cost is already in the not. name. Yeah. Well, low, low cost is about a thousand dollars each, but these are the high velocity version. We could build that for cheaper. Which means even when they're descending with the parachute open, they're going at sixty miles per hour. I I simply think. Okay. That instead of trying to fucking hell divers five sandwiches into Gaza, you could have a difficult conversation with Benjamin Netanyahu. Maybe. Just an idea. Might be easier. Punch him in the face repeatedly. So, mm -hmm. since this incident, which is at this point a couple of weeks ago, uh, we seem to have revised the procedure. They're trying to land these sort of on the Dude. beach or in the ocean just off the beach, which means they sink. Um, the Jordanian army is having trouble actually landing the aid inside of Gaza. A lot of them have like blown over the wall. Uh, this thing is going pretty poorly. Um, <laughs> it's just it's a clusterfuck, and like by this point, most of the population of the Gaza Strip is concentrated in Rafa, where they have been forced to the south, um, up against the border. Yes, uh, that's Israeli another state. factor. Is a lot of this aid is going into Gaza City and points just north of Gaza City because. You know, again, there's it. It it's weird. There's, there's no, there's yeah, there's no resources going in there, and there's still like some people in there left. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just another sort of like piece of the fucking cavalcade of horrific crimes and clown incompetence. Um, and I, I genuinely don't know what to say about it. Once again, um, you know, uh, other than the fact that the C. Uh, logistics may be slightly more promising, but well, uh, so this no is <sighs> this is the thing that's apparently going on now is we're sending something that's not the CBs in uh, in order to build a pier in Gaza so they you're can doing, load. You're doing like they yeah, can bring so aid, this, ships this, full of aid, which okay, this, this that's things. actually an adequate amount, right? A ship is a mm -hmm. good amount of aid. I think ship loads will work, right? There's there's two things going on. There's one. Uh, there's an NGO called the uh, World Food Kitchen. Uh, they're building a pier, and then um, they're going to try and ship to that. And then the US thing is using a really weird sort of artifact of the uh, global war on terror, which is a sort of arm's length CIA State Department cutout company called Fogbo, um, who are going to be. Using uh, they're, they're going to be doing the like over the beach logistics for this, where you have like a kind of floating dock um, that the aid comes to, and then it gets like taken from that yeah. on shore. They're also sending in the Seventh Army Transportation Corps, uh, which oh, is good. en route at the moment. They're probably they're probably like fifteen days away from arriving at this point. Going to take them another thirty days to build the pier. These guys are the tattered remnants of the Seabees because apparently. Um, uh, we decided at some point during the global war on terror that needing uh, a, a, a military unit which can rapidly build a pier would never be relevant anymore. That's gay shit. Uh, that's, gay that's, shit. that's pretty gay, oh yeah. We, we, we did all of that, oh we didn't even God. abolish the Marine Corps. Yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have the wet troops and then nothing to supply them with. Yeah, the wet, the wet troops, they have to... Uh, the wet troops. They're, they're wet troops, they're not underwater troops, they need a pier to, to at least, they can only get a little wet. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the damp oh, the the of a, marine, a, a marine happily running into combat, but only up to his knees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, after that it hits the like GTA Vice City kind of instant death thing. It starts floating. So in the meantime, all we're doing in order to, you know, assuage the Michigan voters that Biden is actually compassionate, compassionate about Gaza is, you know, dumping a bunch of, uh, a, not a bunch, a very small amount of aid into the ocean near Gaza. So um, yeah. doing great. Enjoy watching a bunch of MREs sink. Mm -hmm. Um, and Biden kind of it's maybe getting through that he's fucking up at this point. Uh, there was a story in I, I think NBC News saying that when he was uh when he was shown the kind of like holes uh of his favorability rating, how it's been impacted by this, he started shouting and swearing, and it's like, Dude, all right, old man, very... put up or shut up, jackass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you you want to claw this back, the the road to that leads through some tough phone calls to Tel Aviv, like fucking. Not even tough. Hey, jackass, stop doing yeah. that, or we're gonna yank your aid. Mm hmm. I there. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. I've done it. Where is my Nobel Peace this is Prize? Just, it, it floors me because like, from even from a real politic perspective, he's fucking up. 
Sure. Like this isn't I don't I don't even understand like what what he seeks to gain from this. It, like it's making him unpopular. It's making America look worse on the international stage. It's really appeasing solely like what Netanyahu and the yeah. six lunatics behind him. John Fetterman. And, and weirdly. The, John Fetterman. Yeah. 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 He's gone through Fettermanization. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but just like what the hell? Why? It's ugh. Yeah, it, not, that's not, all I have. It, Sorry. it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, but Biden could you know definitely like start mitigating this anytime he wants to, but he's not going to do that because uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, maybe when he was going to school, well, he went to school in Scranton. Never mind. I I was thinking like in Wilmington. Maybe, maybe they have Wilmington like a and Cheltenham Township are not too far off from each other. No, he went to he grew up in Scranton. He went to he yeah, went but to like is he is he into piss? Is he into some weird shit? Because like if there's a P type. That kind of that makes a bit more sense to me, you know. I mean, he's still like a sort of perfect moral coward for not like sacrificing his own piss kink to like stop a genocide. But Biden like, could get away with having a piss tape, I think. <laughs> what? I think I think you're probably right about that. I think. He, Why I, would it you wouldn't... say those words in that order? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's right. It wouldn't. It wouldn't no, tank him in the right. same way that yeah. like, right. it would like, most other politicians. It's been around a long just like, time. Oh yeah, dude's a freak. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. That, I, um, there's a piss tape in black and white. It was. It was it was shot with the same <laughs> camera shot, we used to film on the moon. <laughs> Lady La- La- Bird Johnson's in the back with the magic wand. Yeah. <laughs> what is Straw Thurman? What are you doing here? <laughs> oh wow! Oh, yeah. All God. our favorite characters from history. <laughs> they, they say they Don't say that Biden's history? memory is going, wow. but he's like it's Elvis perfectly Presley. able to recall to the moment and the day uh, where he was when he got pissed on by like Jack Kennedy. <laughs> Well, I want to throw up in my mouth. All right. <laughs> yep, that's, that's, that's the world chin before problem we problem. finish the news. Another aspect no, we will never this, finish the news. I don't know. A lot of people have been throwing around conspiracies that this pier that they're building is going to be ultimately for stealing Gaza's natural gas reserves, which are offshore. It doesn't seem like a very good way of doing that. Here's the yeah. thing with offshore natural gas drilling. It's really expensive. There's a yeah, reason those like... resources are not exploited, and that's because they're not very good. <laughs> also, even if you wanted to do it, I feel like you would do it after you had completed the genocide. Yes. Right? So that just just in case nobody with like an RPG puts a red triangle over your like yeah. offshore gas well, drilling. It is, it is very and, American to try to extract resources in the middle of a genocide. And that is you something we could love definitely oil do. so much you're like going into like heavy fire to try and like suck it up with a straw. And you don't use a pier for that. You use an offshore drilling platform, and then you just ship the natural gas to a terminal that already exists. Mm. Yeah, which I think Israel has anyway. So yeah, you probably do it in like Haifa or somewhere like that. Yeah. Mm. Well, who knows? Maybe the Houthis will like get lucky with one of those long range missiles. Yeah, uh, yeah. You get the get the supersonic, ultrasonic, whatever the hypersonic. That's the word. Hypersonic. That, yeah. hypersonic's, hypersonic's the new sonic. shit. Yeah. 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 Um. So that's the current situation in Gaza. We're dropping blocks of food on people's heads. Can continue, continue to protest. Yeah. Um, in other news, uh, Boeing I, killed I, a guy. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I knocked this shit out in like five seconds in Photoshop, and I genuinely think we could do it as a shirt. Um, it's 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 Bova. It's it's fucking it's Bova. Bova. It's Bova. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not Boeing to God. make it. You are Boeing Damn. to die. Bova. You're gonna get McDonald and Douglas. <laughs> that just sounds like I'm gonna get fisted. Yeah. Well, like LBJ. Uh, no, I was thinking like Donald and Douglas from uh, from uh, Thomas and Tank Engine. You remember that he crushes oh, the yes, brake yes, fan, yes. Oh, just yes, murders yes, him yes. on okay. screen. I'm not yeah. going to get fisted. All right, <laughs> <You're> good. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, th- this the thing is right. Mental health can happen to anybody at any time, and sometimes you uh, what you do is you you like blow the whistle on Boeing, and you go to testify to a grand jury. And before you go to testify, you say, if anything happens to me, it's not an accident. Uh, and then something happens to you because you've been struck by mental health. Yeah. And then you and then you and then then it's like your third day of testimony. Boeing's lawyers ask you to stay an extra day. You go uh-huh. back to your hotel. You think, I want to get some Taco Bell. And then you go get the Taco <laughs> Bell. You come back and you're parked <laughs> in the hotel parking lot. And then you shoot yourself before you eat the Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't seem... 
like it's an extremely I mean, logical. I, I don't know. I've, Look, I've, I've, I've like opened have... some Taco Bell bags before, and I've had that reaction. I so. have never oh, had that reaction with Taco Bell. I always that's because every I time we Taco get it, Bell, I'm like, I want to have the fucking Taco Bell. <laughs> I don't want to talk about now, but like, yeah, no, but it, you just open, the, you're like in a situation where you're on like the mental health equivalent of one hit point, and you're like, I, if any single thing inconveniences me, it's fucking Bova. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> you look in the bag, and the like, the fries are everywhere. They've got the kind of like from Taco, Taco Bell? Bell. Yeah, they're like Taco Bell fries. Taco you got. fries. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah they're yes, like okay. they've got the like fucking covering all over everything. Uh, you're gonna have to like get it on your hands, and in that moment, you just decide to fucking like it's over, yeah, yeah you, you, yeah. you like bow off, and you fucking yeah. So part of my understanding is that these um this particular uh, whistleblower, like this the case he was in, I think had something more to do with like compensation he sh- was supposed to receive from Boeing as a result mm. of his whistleblowing uh, being illegally retaliated or something like that i gotta do some research on this it's well, something i mean the real reason sort of like refuge in audacity to like really retaliate yeah i mean <laughs> this know? is um yeah I, i'm I, I was like at first i was like well this seems like a weird coincidence now i'm yeah, definitely no, on no. team boeing killed this guy um yeah right. like because like you're like karen silkwood was in the 70s and boeing's like such a major company it's going to be all over the news anyway it kind of doesn't make sense there should be a plausible explanation and then you read about it and you go oh they fucking killed that guy <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. he he broke the like bo murta and they fucking killed him <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's it's probably not good that the like companies can just uh had to write you. a death poem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <damn it. laughs> just, I, Boeing, I still... Boeing, Boeing hires like a corporate assassin, like an Agent 47 guy to come shoot him. Um, and he, he he like goes into the car and he shoots him and the slide flies off the pistol and one of the doors falls off his truck. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge. I, st- I still maintain that this would be the funniest way to k- of all time. Like what I mean, better way to get back at the company that you worked for for thirty? Like I can imagine being this angry, right? Like mm. that's the thing is like hey, I'm like so sixty seven years old. Of this. I was Sorry. about to say the algorithm's oh. not going to like this episode either. We'll, 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 we'll bleep Shit. practically, but yeah, I, I I think it's thematic at least. I mean, you can't say it that I, they depressurized the fuck out of that guy's skull. Is the thing? Yes. I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, I can imagine being this angry, where you're like, this is going to, like, they were, they didn't think they could get away with screwing me over. Well, I will show them. Go get your Taco Bell. Realize they forgot one of your tacos. Just be like, fine. Now, <laughs> now works. Who gives a shit? Well, the right. guy's lawyer See said ya. he was in good spirits, looking forward to day three or day four of deposition or whatever it was. You know, he's like, really yes, bad a, Taco had Bell. Had a lot to live for. <laughs> you know, everything. But yeah, I, I've never experienced Taco Bell that bad. Other than the wait no. for the Taco Bell, and he'd already gotten also, that like, over with. If he was, if the Taco Bell was going to really be what did it, he would have done it the day after when he was in the restroom. Mm, sure. Yeah. The the Taco Bell that kills you instantly. Door flies off the bathroom door. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like Ex- if Boeing explosive if decompression, if you will. Yes. I feel like if Boeing's going to like assassinate somebody they have to play to their strengths you know if if i'm a sort of boeing whistleblower i'm never leaning on any railing that's like bolted in place ever again yeah right because i know they've been through they've loosened that shit I, I like how i am now uh we've discussed hitachi magic wands and we will get content warning just like the last episode i was on yeah, yeah. i'm doing my job <laughs> mm-hmm. all right before we do anything else that gets us gets the algorithm angry at us uh, let's uh, say that was the goddamn news. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Uh, this looks like some kind of ele- why well, this looks like some kind of electrocated vehicle. Wow. Where, <laughs> where does the horse go? go? You would be correct. Uh, this is uh, I, I have it I have it phrased in Raw's format. What is an electric vehicle? Um, and the answer is yeah, it's a car that uses. It- <laughs> <laughs> we can just replace this with a picture of a train, you know? That's fair. I mean, that that would be... That's a different episode. I don't know enough about trains. I like trains. I build little models of them. But I know I actually talk about cars for a living. So that's what I'm here to discuss. 
Um, this is a diagram of an e-golf. This is Volkswagen's electric compliance car. Um, oh that was kind of like a. <laughs> this is the hey only guys, car we're... you'll be allowed to drive in the future, Liam. But we're yeah. really sorry about the whole diesel car thing. Um, but uh, the whole point we of this episode. You a GTE? Eh? Eh? Uh, no, no, these things were bad. Uh, we get to compliance cars, or I'm going to get to compliance cars. I'm going to go off about it. Don't worry. Um, the, the point of the episode is to explain what all this is. So let's just go straight to the next slide. That one's prettier anyway. I shot Ooh. this picture, so it's cool. Ooh. Um, yeah. I actually drove this I was, thing. I, I was going to say, I was wondering why the photo is so good. And I was like, oh, because Victoria took it. Okay. Yeah, I, I drove this car. Um, so electric cars have been around for literally over a century at this point the car that's pictured here is a 1908 uh columbia electric victoria phaeton um which i drove it is it was a expensive luxury car from the from the early 1900s um the first re rechargeable electric car came out in 1887 and it had 50 miles of range wow. since then no change yeah no. <laughs> Range well, anxiety, but worse. And, and well. so the thing that's the thing that's kind of worth noting here is that in the early days of automobiles, electric cars were absolutely so much better than everything else in the market. Uh, in 1900, there were about 4,000 something cars t in total registered on American roads. 1,500 of them were EVs. A thousand were gas. The rest were steam. Um, so it, this was like a. It was. It was. It seemed for a while like electric cars were going to run away with everything because steam cars, I think you've done a few episodes about the perils of steam, but they require a, a boiler. They they take forever to warm up. They can explode and kill you. You have um, to be doing all kinds of like throwing like giant levers and shit. And yeah. The, yeah. The worst part was they only figured out the steam car properly at the very end. The biggest issue with steam cars, aside from the maintenance, is that none of them were free steaming, right? So you were yeah. limited not by fuel, not by water. Your speed, you you were limited by the amount of steam you could generate. So you know if you wanted to drive at forty miles an hour, you were good for that for like I don't know two or three miles or something. You ran out of steam. You had to stop and let the fire build up pressure in the boil again to keep going. Um, mm -hmm. So you know this is this uh, you know the steam car. They didn't figure out a free steaming steam car until like the very end like the late 20s and by that time the the writing was on the wall <laughs> yeah. time to bring it back time to reinvestigate give me the advanced steam concept car <laughs> come on but mercedes, lots, mercedes lots doesn't torque. have anything Merce better to do you lots know? of torque yeah, no mercedes <laughs> prefers gas powered cars yeah. if you know what i mean mm. Oh mm. i can't speak about <laughs> we, that because we, i want to we, still get their press cars <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. No one's gonna hear it anyway because we demonetized it in the first half hour by talking We're about already the, guy, demonetized. The, guy, the guy fucking <laughs> Boeing himself. Mm -hmm. Um the other thing that's worth noting is that early gas cars also sucked. Uh the electric starter was not invented until 1912, which meant that what? every car before then you had to crank with your arm. Yes. Um, which sucked, first of all. Like it's very it's extremely hard because you have to overcome the actual compression force of the motor. Yeah, you might uh, break your arm very easily. Yeah, if it backfires, it just snaps your arm in half. Um, a thing that famously would never hurt you or kill you, uh, especially before modern medicine. Um, so, like, cars were kind of, you know, they were also contraptions. Not, not like, maybe quite to the same extent as steam, but they sucked. Um, and then you have electric cars, which are quiet. Uh, they basically, you plug them into a wall and they charge. They, the first electric car had 50 miles of range. I think the one that I was driving... It was on updated batteries, but in theory, you could get probably 70 or 80 miles of range out of that carriage on screen right now. Wow. Huh. Um, you would be doing maybe 15 or 20 miles an hour because uh, let's go to the next slide. This is your motor. Um, that is the actual motor inside the Columbia that I drove. It's oh, like hell yeah. Three horsepower. It's a the bike chain. Yep. Oh, yeah, the, it's it's you put just, this you put this on an e-bike. You're called you're flying. <laughs> oh, oh, well, so here's the thing. So driving this was incredibly fun because it was steered with a tiller. It didn't have a steering wheel yet. Oh, hell, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just a carriage. It's it's literally just a horseless carriage. No windshield. It's got a fold up like leather rooflet thingy. Um, everything is made out of this gorgeous wood. It, there's only one gauge. It is just a giant plus. It's just like a giant steel blob that shows you uh, remaining voltage and like current amp draw or something. I forget exactly what it was. 
but it's like it is just a carriage that they strap an electric motor to so you do 15 miles an hour in this thing and you are flying i cannot emphasize how scary this thing was to do 15 miles an hour in because it's also <laughs> worth like a hundred grand and the owner is sitting next to me as i like crank the tiller driving that through like the hollywood hills in los angeles it was terrifying um but uh so evs initially were uh, ahead of the game on like top speed runs they were ahead of the game on um like distance runs like pre i don't know if you've heard of the cannonball run but that's the new york city oh, to yeah. los angeles like top speed blitz uh they had a bunch of versions of these they didn't really do at new york to la because there were no roads that could take you there yeah uh, but they would do like new york to cleveland or something or new york to detroit and those those would be like you know it took three days or whatever and most of the reason that evs were good for it is like you're not worrying about you know i need to do 100 miles an hour it's i need a vehicle that like i can refuel somewhere along the way uh it's it's hard to break which these are because they have few moving parts the the u.s didn't um, have like uh, uh like gasoline infrastructure to support them which is yeah. a fascinating yeah. inversion of the like ev thing now of yeah. being like well it's fine but where are you gonna like stop to refuel it that was like petrol you know it's yeah, yeah it's a, it's a cool idea but like come on you, you have to build some kind of network of like gas stations all over the place you know it's yeah. crazy yeah, so so Columbia actually completed a bunch of these top speed runs, and they they've had a couple of early records in the early 1900s. Um, Columbia, for what it's worth, just to give you an idea of what the automobile industry was like at this time, uh, it was founded by Albert Pope, who was some like Union Civil War general-ish kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember his rank. I don't. I'm not not that kind of girl. Uh, but uh, how dare he, you? <laughs> <laughs> he built bicycles after the war and then he was like oh these motorized carriages are going to be where it's at next and switched into like building cars in the like late 1890s he was a brevet um, lieutenant colonel uh which grow up make general idiot <laughs> oh. Oh. um but uh so this company this this columbia motor company which nobody has ever heard of except for me because i drove one um, was the first car manufacturer to ever sell 1,000 cars. Wow. It just barely beat out Oldsmobile, which you may know from previous Victoria Scott episodes of Well, There's Your Problem. So right. o back, then it was called, uh, back then it was called Newsmobile. <laughs> <laughs> God, why did I laugh at that? <laughs> yeah. we, we, we sort of operate in a Stockholm Syndrome basis we here. We sure do, Nova. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, you know, this is like a huge Sorry, deal. Give this, us your wallet while we're here. I, I will. <laughs> yeah, give, uh, us, give us your lunch Do you need the three numbers on the back, too? I can read yes, off my please. credit card. Thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, um, but, so the, the net effect of this is electric cars are quiet, they're fast, they're, they're, um, they're reliable, because there's not much to break on them, They've, they're, high, they're, they're high status. Um, Teddy Roosevelt's first motorcade had a Columbia in it. It was the first motorcade ever to happen in America, and he was sitting in a Columbia for it. Uh, Queen Victoria purchased a Phaeton carriage for, like, I don't know, uh, what is in the notes? Daughter-in-law so. Alexandra of Denmark, whoever the hell that is. Um, because they She's were Alexandra like... Alexandra of Denmark. Hmm. To the, like, if you remember the original slide that advertising for Baker Electric Automobiles, it was for the society woman, because... These cars could be operated by women because it, do, it doesn't weren't. sort of like belch smog directly yep. into your face. Yeah, uh, it's like it's like proper. Like yeah. you can it does, you it can literally like shear your entire leg off. It is a uh, it is a vehicle no, uh, for for usage with petticoats. No engine knocking yet, um, because well they haven't they haven't uh you know the gasoline cars are all exploding themselves because we haven't invented tetraethyl lead yet. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The world, the world waits with bated breath for Thomas Mitchell Jr. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, to your Just point, do, doing doing like instead of Anthropocene, there's a Midgley scene in the middle. Listen, it, for all its faults, it oh, did no. increase oh compression God. ratios. You do not have to hand it to Tetron. <laughs> the the, 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 the Midgley scene, the, the Midgley scene era stupid. had some great cars. Is the thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so to your point, like, uh, Clara Ford cucked Henry and drove a Detroit electric for, like, the first several years of the Model T's existence because she thought his cars were too loud and shitty. It's like fucking Grimes driving a Rivian, you know? <laughs> yes. But, Actually, no, but, it's not. It's like Grimes driving a fucking, like, a gas, like a petrol engine car. Yeah. Yeah. Audi, BMW. Yeah. Geo Metro. 
Mitsubishi <laughs> Mirage. It's like fu the funniest car to imagine Grimes in a Geo um, Metro. No, I think a Mirage is where it's at. I have one of those. Mm. They suck terrible. They don't even have the charm of a Geo Metro. No, they're, they just they're, say they're I'm poor. <laughs> Elon, Elon, Elon Musk crying because Grimes is driving away from him with the kids in her Renault Espace. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love okay, a Renault. I actually want one of those. Yeah, they, they, they actually oh, uh, look pretty good. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't did, get them did, here they still. Did a, they did a racing Espace back in the day. Um, Trust me. I, I have thought many times about it. I was gonna make some sort of masturbation joke, but I decided not to. <laughs> anyway, they're very cool. Uh, they yeah, they put like a mid-engined F1 motor in it, and they put it on Top Gear when I was like twelve. It was a oh yeah, part of my childhood. Mm. Um. Anyway, so the summary of this is: these are rich people cars. They're they're status symbols. They don't require any labor. They're silent. You can act better than everybody else. Next slide, please. Hmm. How much has changed? Uh, well, oh, lo love this thing. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. cool. This one was oh, just one that I the... found out when I was <laughs> doing Turbo research for this. <laughs> <laughs> it was built. This is this is the the first car to break sixty miles an hour. Look at on on that lack of suspension. Yeah, it it was called La, La Jamais Content. It, it's is got... apparently French for the never satisfied. It's got leaf <laughs> springs. It's fine. <laughs> it's made of fucking bricks and wrought iron. What the fuck? Yeah, no, it's it was just a it's a big streamliner. It had two it had a two hundred volt drivetrain for sixty seven horsepower. Wow. Uh this thing was absolutely so just a Mitsubishi Mirage then. Yeah, basically. It Mitsubishi Mirage, but make it phallic is basically looks, the design this looks doc. So dangerous. I mean uh yeah, it, so, it's got a it's got a tiller. Um I mean, it yeah. looks like it looks like you operate it entirely by hand. This is like a streetcar operating thing, <laughs> like like, yeah, he's, like he's a like, motorman's like stand. Thing. He's like his his like one ass cheek is on the like sill of the cockpit. Yeah. I guess he's bisexual. This is piloted, he's piloted by <laughs> Camille Genazzi, who is a, a Belgian man who went by Le Diable Rouge because he was ginger and had a red oh, beard. For God's sake. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean. The the funniest thing I found during this is completely unrelated to electric vehicles, but he died in 1913 when he hid behind a bush while on a hunting party and made animal noises, and one of his friends <laughs> shot him thinking he was actually, <laughs> actually an sometimes, animal. Sometimes your animal noise imp impression can be like they, too good. They then rushed him to the hospital in a Mercedes, and he bled out and died, fulfilling his prophecy that he would die behind the wheel of a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Uh, that is not related to anything else. I just thought it was funny as hell. That's that's charming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other other famous things. Uh, McKinley's ambulance that took him to the hospital when he was shot was also electric. Um, I know this because uh, my roommate won't stop singing Sondheim's Assassins. Shoga Shangri Man. Fuck! It's the it's the best musical. Is the thing. She, she's gonna really love this episode because she tells me the same thing three times a week. It's the best one. They, they should st they should have stopped making musicals after Assassins because it was the best one. I I haven't ever. I've listened to like three musicals. My parents wouldn't let me listen to musicals as a child because they were afraid it would make me gay. And <laughs> apparently, you know. I did. I did listen to like one musical, and then I did become gay. So <laughs> See, they may have been correct. I listen to a lot of musicals and I'm straight. I mean, that's what underexposure does to you. The man <laughs> maybe, does love a yeah, musical. Yeah, I mean, maybe you became like habituated, or maybe it's like a sort of like odd even thing with a switch. You've seen like a perfectly even number of musicals. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think it may have been the part where I was an altar boy. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I managed yeah. to skip that particular form of indoctrination. And you're straight, see? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's proof. You heard it here first, folks. Being an altar boy makes you gay. They, they really did some science to, to Big Bill McKinley, though. Like, they uh, uh, went to hospital in an electric ambulance, tried to get the bullet out with an x-ray and a fucking metal detector and shit. None of it worked, and then he died and became the only US president to date successfully assassinated by anarchists. Hey, we did a thing! <laughs> yeah, to impress <laughs> a girl. Favorite to impress favorite a girl. Favorite number one. My favorite thing about that whole story is uh, Leon, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Shogosh. Thank you. Um, 
was was apparently suspected of being a fed the entire time he hung out oh, with yeah. anarchists until he shot the president because he was just <laughs> like hey guys you want to go do some anarchy <laughs> <laughs> you want to go do some federal crimes and emma goldman is like ew gross what the, why are you following me from city to city what, what is like i know how to win her love shoot the president <laughs> What did, what did McKinley know? What was he going to do? Was he going to normalize relations with the Cubans? We have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Some real, like, deep state shit at work. Yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was all for this slide. Next slide, please. So we have to discuss Hello what to killed... these women. I know. I This is from the GE uh, historical archives of their electric chargers that they built back in, like, the, the teens and 20s. And, you know, my whole shtick is dressing like it's, you know roughly 1895 hmm. so i was like this is cool this is good, me good That's what I for dress. To. it was great yeah. like you know i dress like that half the time in seattle and like no one has any drip in the city i love it to death but like nobody knows how to dress here <laughs> but i do get a lot of compliments so you know it counts for something i love these charges though the, i mean fucking i can't even identify half the shit on them but i love yeah, them they're, they're doohickeys yeah. um so unfortunately the chargers are kind of what killed them so remember how earlier you said we didn't have the gasoline infrastructure and it was an inversion of the the modern day thing where we don't have chargers yeah well so they never like they built a bunch of gas stations because um they found they found oil in texas standard, standard oil no. drake's farm drake's yeah. well drake's fucking, well, yeah <sighs> okay so Gasoline's they found oil relatively easy to refine and electrical and infrastructure bolts. is a disaster yeah. show for like a long time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're still like decades out from having like a stable national grid. I'm pretty sure in like 1915 or whatever. 1915, you, have, you like... have multiple competing electrical companies who have all built their own wires on their own poles with different, like they'll, they'll run on like one will be DC. One will be AC at 25 Hertz. One will be AC at 60 Hertz. One will be three phase, and then it's like transformed down. They're all, all the, there's like a rat's nest of wires on every street. Um, you have to buy different appliances and different electrical bulbs and systems based on what electrical company you're hooked up to. And these things are appearing and disappearing like every year. So one day your electrical company goes bust. If you want to get a hookup with a new one, guess what? You're going to have to buy all of your fucking appliances brand new again <laughs> i hate when i have to get my like westinghouse gaming computer yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah so the, and this is this is added to the fact that there's absolutely no saturation outside of the cities so what happened was if you lived in a big coastal city and you had a, a house that you owned and could had all these hookups you could charge your car at home um, or it's certain in certain areas, like GE put these things called electrants. They were electricity hydrants. I like that. Would we should go them. back to that That's name. Cool. Yeah, they would yeah. mount them on the street. You could pull your EV up and park next to it, and you could charge it, like like in the modern day. Um, the the problem is that you know as soon as you leave the city, you're basically screwed. You can't recharge this thing, um, and you know nobody's got power to to fill it back up. And so you've got a 900 pound horseless carriage that you know you know have to push 40 miles back to New York City or whatever. So that sucks. That's number one. Uh, the the other thing is if you don't have a hookup, um, the way that they were solving this for people was here: put a gasoline engine in your garage. Uh, oh, generator okay. technology in 1902 was not fantastic. I don't know if you know. For, this for or a not. second, I thought you were going to say put it in the car, and I was like, how early was a hybrid invented? Uh, that is a, It was earlier than I think it is, but I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> I I, See, to, I I just brought you I on to, to like go, shame you. Yeah, I have. Well, you should do that. That's my thing. Um, you had uh, hidden miss engines as early as like the like eighteen eighties. I want to say um, the loner Porsche mixed. Yeah, first hybrid. That was like what year is this? Department of Energy. Eighteen. It was eighteen something. I wasn't expected to start with an 18 is the main thing. Yeah, you no, got the big, are. the big, really the big old fashioned gasoline engines that took up like a room, had a massive flywheel, generated like two horsepower and an infinite amount of torque. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Department of Energy says 1899. Porsche themselves uh, says 1900. And Ferdinand Porsche did actually design the first electric or uh, first hybrid car. Hmm. So still in hell, though. Oh, undoubtedly. Um, yeah, so, you know, this stuff is all way earlier than we think it is, is the, is kind of the crucial takeaway. 
Um, so the other, the other, and here's, and all of the problems are the exact same. Uh, in 1900, they debuted the Electron at the Madison Square Garden uh, auto show. This is like a huge deal because cars are new and exciting. Um, it could only charge about half the EVs at the show because the connectors were all different. It's uh, nice and, to know that that's it's still the same fucking problems. Yeah, like, we have we yeah. have we have we have the the Chet Emo, we have um the CCS charger, we have which is are different between Europe and America for the record. Of course. Um that we have Nax, we have uh what is the other one I'm thinking of? There's one more. The Hun- Tesla 100 charger. years. No, Nax is the Tesla oh, charger. Oh, I see. 100 fucking years and we we still have not surmounted one like infrastructural problem here. No. No, no, you need you need one standard that's good for everything and then you just have one more standard. To paraphrase XKCD. <laughs> the, 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 yes. the, the only answer here, electric vehicle Stalin. I volunteer for that role. He, I could do it. S- yeah. Secretary Buttigieg, yeah. if you want to fucking uh, take the energy that you use to like kill dogs in secret and channel that into rationalizing America's electrical infrastructure, now would be the fucking time. He needs to take a, he needs to take a cool name to be electric vehicle Stalin. He needs mm. to be like... Um, what are they making in like South Joey Bend? Electron or something. Uh, I mean, <laughs> fucking Master's Theses, mostly. Yeah, I was about to say, um, we can't be Man of Steel, because that's... Yeah, you have to be Man of Electricity. Yeah. Maybe you could like bring back an ancient name, the name of Westinghouse. You could, uh, yeah, oh, you could still buy a shitty licensed microwave with Westinghouse on it. Really? Ooh, fucking yeah, America but... never lets anything die, does it? <laughs> nope. Westinghouse doesn't meaningfully exist anymore. No, it's, it's all another it's just com- licensed out. Yeah, it's another company that committed <laughs> much like Boeing. Um, <laughs> I, I, I get seated on the Westinghouse electric chair, and the fucking arms fall off. <laughs> <laughs> out, outside, a whistleblower. <laughs> well, we know for one, he didn't use the electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that that so that's all the same. Uh, the other thing that happened too, that and this is crucial because this is very different than the modern day. Obviously, um, batteries never got cheaper, and gasoline cars did. Hmm. So in in nineteen oh eight, that that doohickey carriage I drove for the review cost about fifty thousand dollars in today's money. Um, a Model T, when it debuted in uh, nineteen oh eight, cost about twenty seven thousand dollars, and it had a windshield, which and, and a, a steering, steering wheel. wheel. Yeah. So this is like it's already more advanced. By 1923, the Model T was it an has inflation. A windshield, it has a steering wheel. It comes with a free anti-Semitic pamphlet. Which That's if you're way too much a weight to add. In like 1908, you want your anti-Semitic pamphlet. Oh, <laughs> doesn't it have like two speeds. Like you, you can go slow or you can go 40 miles an hour, and there's nothing in between. Uh, I I can't remember if it had two or th- I've driven one once, but it was a really long time ago. And you 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 like shift with your you're like the clutch is on your hand or something. It's really weird driving one. It's not at all. It's like a they hadn't clutch figured is out a good like idea. they hadn't really figured out like where to put all the pedals and stuff yet. So it's just kind of I don't remember how many speeds it had because the main emotion I remember is terror. As as a driver with terrible clutch control, the hand clutch is kind of selling me to be honest. I just, just want to point out, Nova. I, I just I'm noticed. Trying. Both of these machines have faces. You get the eyes. Mm, it's true. So happy to see you. Eyes. Paradolia is happening, but yeah. <laughs> did, did, did you plug the thing little into guys. its like, mouth? Or... No, the. Oh, hello, Bert. Speaking of little guys. Sorry, my cat is here. Oh, hi, Bert. Uh, guest, Bert. guest star Bert, pronouns he, him. Yeah. Bert, do you want to meow into the microphone? Nope, he's quiet. All right, you had your chance. You could have been famous. <laughs> um, yeah, but in any case, like, by by the twenties, like it's Model T, you can buy for an inflation adjusted fifty four hundred dollars. Like, that is how that that is how cheap these things were, and EVs we still cost Fordism. fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, because they're still like hand building all of these things, and like they're, fucking... they're hand building, and they're also you know like lead acid battery tech didn't come down as cheap as they wanted it to as fast as they wanted it to um etc but yeah like ford's assembly line did did help with a lot of this so um anyway hopefully none of this sounds familiar at all mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and 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 then and then yeah, the oil so, the oil oh yeah, Earl. yeah. Earl. So, next slide please so this pathetic oh in commuter car 
I Aww. save energy. I am electric. I reduce pollution. I love Please this. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I swear I have seen this thing compete on Robot Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this this pathetic thing was the best-selling electric car for from 1945 until 2013. Jesus. This this they sold 4444 of these across two different brands because one That's of the companies so like gave up midway through and the half of those were like usps delivery vans they like did like a limited experiment and this was in the 70s when um the fuel crisis the oil crisis happened and everybody was kind of like well we need to do something and nobody could think of what to do uh and then you get the old diesel episode um this yeah. is what the mm-hmm. other people were trying at the same time gm also tried doing a thing called the the elect electvet or electrovet at the same time which was an electric converted chevette um, they built like one and were like, this sucks and gave up. Fuck this, we're going home. Well, yeah, yeah, they I mean, were like, let's build a diesel motor that explodes every 20 miles anyway, instead. We just didn't have like good battery technology until like a well, few years from now. Um, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that was the like, the, GM had the, what was it, the EV1? Have I got some thoughts on oh, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. So, no one, no one tries actually making money off of EVs again until about 2007. But next slide, please. And this is this is, I guess, the closest we get to like a true godforsaken well, environmental disaster. So in in oh, I remember this. Yeah, someone was selling one of these on Cars and Bids the other day. The Gen One Rav Four with the yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Rav Four. This this is the Rav Four EV, the Honda EV Plus, and the GM EV One. <clears throat> I, lo- I so love the EV1. This Every- looks like a kind of like squirt of ketchup yeah. in red. Yeah, <laughs> everyone likes the EV1. I think that it, it, it's a cool looking car. It looks like the future in 1990. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the same kind of like contours as like Oakley sunglasses. It, well, and it was also like it had like magnesium wheels on it and magnesium seat frames. It had a co- coefficient of drag of 0.19. Like this thing was so goddamn advanced. Uh, for the era in terms of like every aspect of its design um and they're adorable i've seen one in person they're also much smaller than you think they are like imagine miata <laughs> huh like first gen miata so pop-ups um but yeah so it, all of these cars exist because in 1990 the california air resources board decided that they would that 10 percent of new cars sold in the state of california had to be evs by 2003 um and auto manufacturers were like uh, okay that that, that no. technology does not exist yet and yeah they're, they're doing being... the, they're doing the like bottom fingers pointing together emoji yeah. where they're kind of like well, uh, maybe maybe we can try is that is that the noise that bottoms make uh. generally speaking for me yes um uh. the the problem here is that like nobody really wants to invest a ton of money into this because they're instead going to just lobby the california government to give up um it's, so it, it's cool how like regulation without enforcement drives innovation right <laughs> yeah yeah so so like the the it's nice unfunded companies, mandate for you <laughs> most companies do the, the easy way out they take like the ford ranger ev if you've ever been to like a, a mid-tier midwestern school you've probably seen one they had a ton of them as work trucks at kent state where i went to school um they're just like lead acid battery rangers that get like 12 miles of range and they sold them entirely as fleet trucks. They made like a hundred, they made a couple thousand of them or something. Um, then you had like the RAV4 EV, which was an existing car. It was a higher effort attempt. And then you had like the EV plus and the Nissan ultra that were Japanese spec cars brought to the U S and then converted to electric specifically just to meet these car requirements. Um, the, the interesting part about all of these is that uh, they all used um, n- most of the important ones used nickel metal hydride batteries, um, which was not as powerful. Uh, not, it's not as powerful as modern lithium ion, yeah, but, but it's, it is. It's, it's safe, sort of, it, and it, it, it charges incredibly. slow. It discharges slow. Uh, it, it, everybody loves it, apart from when you need to use it for an application like cars. Well, and they're they're not. Yeah, they're non toxic. They're pretty easy to manufacture. They they're heavy, but you know, you know, the Rav Four EV got somewhere around like one hundred and four. It was upgraded for one hundred and forty miles of range. Mm. Um, the the EV One initially used lead acid batteries, which was part of why it got really bad initial reviews. But the second gen, they used um, they used nickel metal hydride, and those were well over one hundred miles of range in like this no, tiny little coupe. Introduce you to the 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 chemical element lithium. 
Uh, and the thing well, about the, the element lithium in a battery is it wants to kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, nobody's really doing much with that. There was a way to make this work if we were moving towards lighter cars, which obviously we didn't do. <laughs> well, it gets better. Yeah. Well, so they, next, they made next us slide, be more please. safe, bunch of Nazis. <laughs> All right. So this is a bunch of crushed EV ones because GM destroyed no. virtually all of them. They it was when beautiful, they, ugly bumpers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, these, these, these thirty. They, I think they they rated these as like thirty five thousand dollars a pop, and they still would have lost money if they actually sold them. But they didn't sell any of them. They leased them to people, took them back at the end. Somehow Francis Ford Coppola still has his. Uh, he like he like showed this off in like an Instagram thing or something like a couple of years ago, and it, everybody was like, "What the fuck, man?" Yeah, you had to like hide it in a barn or something. Yeah, yeah, you had to like you had to evade the GM police, and they have <laughs> they 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 are scary. GM has shooters. Yeah, GM's <laughs> as bad as Boeing. Well, worse than Boeing because like when they decompress you, they do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so the the story with the EV one is, you know, uh, GM had bought an, a really leading nickel metal hydride battery developer uh used them to build the ev1 just lobbied the, the california government they were like nobody's gonna buy these they did a bunch of internal research that was like we'd have to give people seven thousand dollars to take these which every other study that was conducted disagreed with C consumer demand was totally there um there were like there were like actual waiting lists for this car uh but they were like all right we're done so in 2003 they wiped their hands of it they crush all these cars um Incidentally, around this time, they they sell the company that owns the patent for nickel metal hydride powered cars to Texaco, huh, that's bought by weird. Chevron. Hmm. That's really that's what a huge coincidence. Though. At this wow. time, Toyota's still making Rav fours, uh, the Rav four EV, with nickel metal hydride batteries. Um, people still love them. I've actually seen them driving uh, like on the streets of LA. People just drive them around. There's not a ton of them in existence, but like they don't degrade very much when you're they're in a really good climate so they're still out there running around not too um, many not too many parts to break down you know <laughs> yeah yeah and you know they're if you're driving like 70 miles a day or less they're completely fine you know they they, they charge overnight you, you've got a usable car um anyway chevron sues them to stop building these uh Fucking, yeah the, the, they do the stone cusses thing they try to kill the electric car yeah, so this is there's a documentary about this. It's called like "Who Killed the Electric Car." Um, it, Chevron, it's it's apparently. it's it's a little like it's it's partially that I think automakers didn't want to build it. California kind of gave up on this at the same time. Um, I will say it's worth noting that nobody ever figured out a way to build nickel metal hydride battery cars with without infringing on the patent. Um, so no one ever did. Toyota still used nickel metal hydride batteries in hybrids, which weren't covered by the patent until 2022. Uh, so the Prius used those without problem for basically its entire existence until the most recent generation. Uh, so the, the tech is clearly like usable, um, but no one could figure out how to do it without getting sued. Yeah, and uh, well, Chevron, there's, there's, there's one patent to it, which is owned by an oil company. Cool. Chevron did renew the patent twice until 2019. So they did actually find it worthwhile to pay the fees to keep the patent live. Uh, until 2019, and then they let it lapse because at that point, you know, lithium is, exists. Mm. Um, I, I so yeah. I, I mean, did they do anything untoward? Legally, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> However, just, Chevron earned a, 21.3 billion dollars last year. <laughs> it's just a series of interesting coincidences. Exactly on, on a warming planet. So it just happened exactly. to be an oil company, and we just happened to own the battery patent. But rest it's assured, we put. Looking we put four hundred and fifty thousand dollars into green energy initiatives last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah their their CEOs even sometimes fly as commercial. Wow. Uh, <laughs> you should fly on a Boeing. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, the problem is most of the Boeings in the air right now are still good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, so that's kind. Of, you know that that's. Nickel metal hydride would have been replaced anyway, in short order. By next slide, please. The element that wants to kill you. Oh, the IMEV, right? Yep, this is the first mass market lithium ion battery car. So cute! I'm so happy I to see you. I, I want to. I want to pet it. You yeah. know, it is a little guy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little, little guy, guy full of the chemical that wants to kill you and also helps stabilize your mood disorder. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so it's actually a K car from Japan. They just put batteries in it. 
they had already there's actually there's like a different version in japan that's like you know not electric and they were just like oh we got this thing cool hmm. um so it's adorable uh these had not much range in them um but they they were a mass market lithium ion battery car this was like a huge moment where you were like oh you could sell these people and they won't immediately like self-immolate in somebody's garage yeah and and people people like them because lithium batteries uh charge fast discharge fast and are sort of safe <laughs> yeah so these are li good lithium-ion batteries like the the highest performance ones we've got on the market um are roughly four times four to five times more power dense than nickel metal hydride so you can fit a lot more power per kilogram into these um and you know you can they are they're easier to put together into high voltage setups so you can get more efficiency when you're charging so you get faster charging speeds yeah. uh you get less there's less resistance it's it's less like, dangerous than uh the the other thing that people were looking at was hydrogen uh d d do yes. not fuel cell cars uh, baby do not do not do this um but all Hy the same hydrogen has a lot more problems than just being dangerous oh Toyota <laughs> yeah. will still sell you a new hydrogen car too no shit you uh, can go, but yeah you can go buy a Mirai you, yep. you, what what you don't want to do is you don't want to um uh, overcharge puncture or set on fire your lithium battery. Because if if you do do those things, then you have a uh, fire, which is very difficult to impossible to put out. Yeah. So speaking of which, next slide, please. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry. Well, one of these things killed a billionaire recently. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, ha um, it had it had the it had the sort of like it had the inverse Boeing problem where the door wouldn't fall off. The door would not fall <laughs> the off. Door fall the, off, the, Mr. Bob. The, the, the doors on Teslas are notoriously difficult to open if there's some kind of power failure. In fact, there's somewhere you straight up cannot open the doors if there is a power failure. Yeah, um, so yeah, I think the guidance says you got to like rip out some panels and like fucking pull some wires by yourself, and then some of them it's just like, well, die. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I think hers was a Model X. Is when she had to pull off like a speaker grill and reach for an unmarked cable. Um, one of them is like that in case of power failure. But also like you're, it's it was like midnight in a bog in Texas. Go Googling so, you this know. in bog water, just like. <laughs> uh, yeah, have you ever watched the MythBusters episode where they submerge a car with Adam Savage inside of it? It yeah, goes poorly. Doing that, right? yeah. <laughs> it's the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. Holy shit! It's like it's like up there with that, and they buried Adam Savage alive in a coffin. I think I would rather be buried alive than <laughs> what the than... fuck did Adam Savage do to get like fucking Sears School happening to him <laughs> on TV? I he volunteered I'm be for it. Friends with Jamie, yeah. <laughs> Not even friends, just coworkers. <laughs> You achieve a, a grudging respect from Jamie Heineman, he's gonna try and bury you alive. <laughs> just, so, just keep it fresh, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that seems terrifying. So yeah, can you imagine doing that in a car whose door handles don't work if the uh, power goes out? I don't want Frantically, do that. you have to be zen for like two minutes until the car hits the bottom and the water pressure equalizes inside the cabin. And then the door doesn't open anyway. Like, and then, then after that, you have to like go on your phone brackets underwater, find which like speaker grill to pull off and which unmarked the uh, wire to pull. Yeah, and the whole reason it happened, for what it's worth, is because these things are driven by a touch screen. And so she shifted into, I think it was drive instead of reverse, and drove into the pond uh, because she tapped the wrong thing on the screen that dictates which direction the car goes. Why is uh, that on I, the I, screen? Uh, I, I'm yeah. not good at gear changes with a like a a, a stick. Yet, but uh, I would rather wrestle with that than this fuck is, up with an iPad and die in a bog. This is yep. a, a. I would never set foot in a Tesla. I never have, and I never will. Um, I rode I've in the back in of a Model as, X once, and it was yeah. kind of. I don't know. I, I've, I've been in them I've, in Ubers before, and I've been like, I been, don't. I don't want. I'm, to. I'm always terrified. I'll be drunk, and someone will like call an Uber for me, and it'll show up, yeah. and it'll be in Uber, a Tesla, it, and Uber I would be happens. like, I'm, I'm being, Uber, but, uh, I'm yeah. being belligerent, but for a different reason than you think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this is a this is already a good intro to Tesla tech. Um, so the other thing too about you know remember how you said that you can't puncture those batteries because they'll kill you. Yeah. Uh, kill yeah. You the, real bad. The original so. The Roadster, the first car the Tesla built was the Roadster in 2008. It was a basically a nice Lotus-based kit car. Um, it was like fairly high performance. It was fairly expensive. It was a toy for rich people, and it sold 
pretty well as a toy for rich people. That was um, before they, Elon Musk was involved with the company, no, right? No, he was in, he was involved at that point. Oh, okay. Um, it was it, I don't know if he was I don't know if he cl- had sued to be successfully called a co-founder yet. Mm. But he did sue oh, and is a, considered one of them. That man yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah. Um so so yeah, so he they built the roadster, they turned that funding into the S, which is the car you see here. It is a luxury sedan. Um, the, the thing is, is like NHTSA ended up investigating these because they didn't really have enough, uh, battery shielding on them, which they had later had to fix. Um, as of the most recent count, and it is very difficult to find exact counts, uh, somewhere between 40 and 60 people appear to have died in fires related to Tesla's. Uh, if you're curious, this is over, eh, you know, roughly the same number of Ford Pintos sold, which killed 27 people. We've, we as a society have become much more tolerant of people dying in fires, I guess. Yes. Yeah, well, because, like, you know, the car is cool. It's a status mm. symbol for rich people. And, like, that is... That means it's good. Just so well, long as it so, doesn't take me in the back seat with them when I'm drunk and getting an Uber. Like the, the deeply, The deeply frustrating part about Teslas is that, like, the batteries are actually pretty good. They, they're yeah. like the battery tech is Panasonic built a lot of them. Um, they, their newest ones are like 300 watt hours a kilogram, which is absolutely insane. Um, they're they it's, they're, they don't release like their exact spending, but it, it appears that they spend about 20 percent less on them than most other car companies. So they've just figured out like the infinite money glitch with these things. They're really good. It's just that the rest of the car around it is generally low quality. Um, no, overseen by a racist child. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and oh, like, and, a, and and probably a pal. We should just throw mm, that in there. Yeah, yeah. By all means, we're already demonetized. He's <laughs> pal. I don't give a fuck. Take, t- t- take take a Boeing flight. Seek Canadian healthcare. What do you want me to tell you? Oh my god, Jesus. Um, I work for an automotive Canadian outlet. Canadian healthcare please. suggests you take another Boeing flight. <laughs> <laughs> if my boss listens to this, I'm not saying any of this. <laughs> I hope to God my boss doesn't listen to this. <laughs> it <was a> <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, it's that's that, that that's that the thing is is that like, you know, uh the Nissan Leaf was the best selling EV up until about 2018, at which point then like the Model 3 came out and just ob- obliterated every electric car sales record in history. Um it's worth noting, next slide, please. Tesla took a very long time to um I, I, I see a note here. Uh, yeah, yeah. The thing is I've only had one gin and tonic, so i we're not I'm not I'm not I can't ruin my career yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do it, coward. Oh my god. No, I worked pretty hard for this career. I like it. Um no. <laughs> so they it took them a long time to, to actually make money building electric cars. Um their valuation has always been insane because they're a tech company that make happens to build cars as a product. Uh, but a lot of how they did well in the early survival stages was very intelligent use of loopholes. Put it mm-hmm. like that. That shouldn't get me sued and should allow me to keep my job. Lots, lots of subsidies. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, for example, this diagram here is of a hypothetical Model S battery swap station. So there oh, was yeah. This... They've been trying this for a bunch of different manufacturers, well, right? Fleet yeah. vehicles and stuff. You don't have yeah. to waste time charging. You just take the whole battery pack off, replace it with a charge one. As a system, charge. as a system, this makes a lot of sense to me. This seems like the way you should do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, and and Tesla was going to build these. I think they built one out of like a car wash in Fremont, uh, in California. It was supposed to be like a, a battery quick swap station where they would basically they'd take your old battery, they'd give you a new fully charged one for the price of you know like a full tank of premium gas basically, and then you'd be off on your merry way. You had the chance to go get your ba- original battery pack back later. Um, they ran this as a pilot program, and they like never happened to do this i mean there's there's very little evidence that any owners actually wanted it and there's very there's even less evidence that uh they really tried to publicize it they basically had it was harris ranch that's where it was at it was just a demonstration and it was open for um a little over a year uh the thing that happens to be the case with this is carb had recently announced that you would get almost double the carbon tax credits if you had an ev that could go to a full state of charge in some absurdly low amount of time like 20 minutes or something driving innovation again yeah Mm -hmm. which the superchargers could not do at this point 
but the battery swaps could. So all they had to do was demonstrate that they had the capability to do this, and then all of a sudden they basically are making you know thousands of dollars more in in carbon credits, um, which it happens is very lucrative. Uh, they they made one point eight billion dollars in carbon credit sales uh, last year. Jesus. Um, they have Lord. so far made nine billion dollars off of that. Uh, and what they do is basically it's it's just how the EPA decided to. It's like it's basically like. Um, what is the word for those things that Catholics do? Um, An indulgence. indulgence. Thank you. Indulgence yes. of the cross. Thank, <laughs> thank you. It's basically like you know. I, I almost said child abuse. <laughs> hey, we've already we've already discussed that. Um, yeah. So they basically, they they take they they take these carbon credits they get for selling zero emissions vehicles, and they sell them on the open market. At, at you know whatever value as offsets for companies that don't make enough EVs. So like you know Stellantis, Dodge specifically does has like has been largely allergic to EVs its whole life because what they have to do is build like Dodge Challengers for yeah, they, have to, um, they have to build the new car. Yeah, right? You have to build a I Ram listened. with like huge stacks. No Ram like, got spun off, man. Oh, it's fine now. Really? No, Ram is still Stellantis though. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I but just they, but they, they have to build the like Chud vehicle. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the Chud vehicle does not get carbon tax I, yeah, credits. But have you considered that I want a Durango Hellcat? It's <laughs> it's it's legal to enjoy Chud things. I want to take that position. I want a Durango Hellcat. <laughs> I mean, I, if, while we're asking for cameras, I want a Fujika uh, GW690. Ooh. Please and thank you. The Texas Leica, because it's big. <laughs> I think a Leica. That's what they I was call just, it seriously. I was thinking about the. It's dog. a medium format rangefinder, and it just looks like a Leica, but it's just like sixty percent bigger in every dimension. They're gorgeous. I have, <laughs> I have, because I have insane friends. I have like seven pro packs worth of fridge stored like '90s Kodak film, like Veracolor sure. three, sitting in my fridge right now that is calling to me to be put oh into an God, actually nice Mary camera. Mary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> later we can do that later <laughs> yeah we'll sort we'll sort this okay all right if you insist uh anywho I, I, I'm, I'm doing some like caucasian style you're... bride kidnapping we're supposed to do that <laughs> can i get this gen one viper or am i not gonna get it because i need to know <laughs> i'd ask ask the patrons yeah, They're actually spare... not that expensive. You can get one for like thirty grand. Now. I know what I can do, Victoria. <laughs> uh, <You can> just... <laughs> the problem is, I'm married to my sweet and wonderful wife, who mm -hmm. uh, doesn't who, want who me keeps to track of your so, your yeah. like increments of thirty grand, and therefore <laughs> it's going to well, it notice also... if thirty grand is missing. First of all, it... that you have thirty grand. Second of all, that it is now missing from your account, and you don't really... have... <laughs> suddenly a Gen One Viper has appeared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also outside, you making the loudest noise heard by anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, she also loves Liam and doesn't want him to buy a thirty thousand dollar euthanasia pod pod with side pipes. <laughs> Give me the pod. <laughs> Give me the euthanasia pod. You, you, you have. I am an American you, and I have the right to kill you, up in a you, Gen One Viper. Yeah, you have bought four wheels and a Canadian palliative care doctor clinging to each one. <laughs> Look, if, you, if, you, if you want to do that, you may as well buy a motorcycle. You know. <laughs> Not allowed to buy one of those, so Gen One Viper it is. <laughs> Why? What, what? Why aren't you allowed to buy a mo? Is this like a Korean thing, or is this like this is a Korean thing? Okay, I thought it might be like you had like a felony or something. No, yeah. oh, yeah, don't worry about that. Do you but think they stop the you from getting a motorcycle in America if you have a felony? They give you one. <laughs> <laughs> Join this, hey, this outlaw is my biker gang. There's a condition of your parole. Two wheels. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what if what if you have like what what if you join a biker gang an outlaw biker gang but you have like a a middling like felony like littering or something you know <laughs> <laughs> just getting the like one percent patch sewn on your like leather vest for someone like, selling yeah an eleven hundred horsepower Dodge Viper oh how much hey Liam I like yeah. you don't do that <laughs> even if you had the money just like I, don't. Do you know what's fun about those cars? Do you know what's fun about those cars? There is only like one company that makes the rear tires for it because yep. they're like this weird fuck off size for those tri spoke wheels. And they're like 
$2,000 a pair. So what happens yep, is yep, yep. no you one ever one replaces the tires. And then, yeah, mm-hmm. No one ever replaces the tires. They get dry rotted and old because they're putting so few miles on their like pride and joy. And then they stab the gas once and they drive themselves into a palm tree and ignite. Don't worry. I won't do that. Patrons, please. I need this gentleman <laughs> viper. It's actually Jed too, I think. But who gives a shit? All right, hang on. I'm clicking this link really fast. Sorry to get off topic. This is the, about as opposite of an EVs. Oh my fucking god, that's hot. Right? right? Yeah. Man. Oh, <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, I know a guy in Houston who has a like track prepped uh, 99 Viper, just like this. It's got white stripes on it, and it is one of the hottest things I have ever sat in. Just like, I like. Oh, cars don't really attract women. Um, but this car would attract this woman. I will tell you that. <laughs> Just the closer you get to a kind of Hot Wheels car, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, I'm I'm easily swayed by things that look like phalluses. So, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you should actually get that, Liam. I endorse thank it. Thank you. Yeah, thank the you. The official auto journalist opinion is buy that Viper. Not anyway. right now. We have a podcast to record, please. Yes. Anyway, I hear you typing. If you if you're putting money into like fucking escrow or something, like, <laughs> or, no, worry, about it, worry about yourself. <laughs> He's selling a bunch of do- Doge coin. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, we have to liquidate the Doge coin. Yeah, I found uh-huh. a Viper GTS. A <laughs> sentence that has probably been actually said. Oh, I'm certain. <laughs> Quite possibly, this. like one day before the person who said it died. <laughs> This is one oh. n- near me. This is in Eighty-five k is too much for a first gen. I know, I know, but this is three thousand miles. I, You're gonna have I, I to replace you. every I seal. Beg of you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm this, getting. This could. This could and probably should be a stream at some point. I'm but... so sorry. I'm so sorry. I have shown a Dodge <laughs> yes, Viper. Yes, I am very. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Very go straightforward. On, go on. Stimulus reaction. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, Join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision and we respect that. Back to the show. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, Tesla, the uh, complete opposite of a of Dodge Viper. Uh, in that it uh, sucks. They it, it will still like, kill you. Sure, no, the, it sure will. But the I whole thing, not in a fun way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, no, it's like, you, an embarrassing or, way. Put, put yeah, it on your like, tombstone, like, oh, I did a burnout, and my car exploded, and you know. Uh, it, a bunch of school children said it and were started cheering versus I yeah. backed into a pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The virgin, the virgin pond billionaire versus the Chad Hoon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, the big thing about Tesla is to understand is that like the whole reason, and I think this is like, people need to just realize this is like the cars themselves do have some redeeming qualities. The big problem is that like so much of the hype around Tesla is what makes them insane. Like, I think it was Goldman Sachs or something valued full self-driving, which is a technology that does not exist and is a beta and should not be on public roads. Um, it's just not real. It's like worth $75 billion. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, sure. Like if, if you could invent a car that self-drove and it could be an automatic taxi cab and it could rent itself out to people, I'm sure it would be worth a lot of money. But like it doesn't exist. Um and self-driving cars are their own whole problem, and the fact that those have become linked with EVs is upsetting because what we're doing is we're, we're setting up 
a similar set of problems that we had a hundred years ago. Next slide, please. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming you, I am assuming you're familiar with Big Bill Hells. Shove it up mm. your ugly ass. <laughs> That's right. Shove it up your ugly ass. <laughs> bring your tray to bring your wife. Will fuck her. That's right. Will <laughs> fuck your wife. <laughs> uh, foundational to my sense of humor. Uh, the, the, the problem, the one thing that Tesla did get right is that they do direct sales. Um, because the thing is, is that it turns out that like car dealerships car do not want, sucks. <laughs> car dealerships don't want to sell you EVs like at yeah. all. Well, the they thing have is zero like, interest. Car, car dealers are the scum on the bog in which all of us are like watching a billionaire <laughs> pilot their EV. Yes. Car, car dealers are the base of the Republican party. Car dealers are America's petty bourgeois. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Listen to Trash Future about that with uh, Pat Wyman. Car dealers are like, you know, a lot of these people are multimillionaires, like small multimillionaires, but multimillionaires. And, you know, they they basically control like the whole town they live in. They own every, three every dealerships. Person, they, they have, every, every person who owns a car dealership was at January 6th and is Hitler. Every yes. single car dealer <laughs> is Hitler. <laughs> if they if they had just done like a sort of drone strike double tap on the Capitol uh, to like eat, if Nancy Pelosi had like called in an airstrike on her own position, you would not be able to buy a car in America for like a week afterwards. Uh, more than a uh, week. No, I mean, no one you, left you, would have, you would have killed the car dealers and their children. <laughs> <laughs> you would have killed the tractor it's, dealers it's, too. And then to you know honest, what would happen? People would be degrowth. able to repair their John Deere tractors on their own. <laughs> this is, yeah. this, is, this, is a, this is a classic win-win, you know? Going back to in the time machine to the, like, Capitol tunnels on January 6th to be like, uh, Speaker Pelosi, you can change the course of history for the better. Call the airstrike. Call, call, uh, call we, the F-35s. We, we need to launch the nuclear <laughs> missiles. <laughs> Today is the day we nuke Washington, D.C. for the good of the nation. <laughs> they could make so, it a um, small one, though, no, just a little one, so we don't get, like, the, the Christ, places yeah. where people live. Yeah, the, 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 Washington, D.C. looks like Fallout 3. The rest of the country's fine. Listen, if, every, if, if, if you have lived in Washington, D.C., you know that everyone in Washington, D.C. who actually lives there if the actual capital district were vaporized one day, everyone would feel much better the following yep. day. Yep. <laughs> it's just at that point, Washington DC is just a nice mid-sized city. Yes. <laughs> Maybe Georgetown too. Um, <laughs> Georgetown's part of DC. Wipe it off the face of the planet. You're going to get a metro station in my America, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking like, like can the, we nominate the, Liam for, for climate Stalin? Mm, I think so. Oh, I think you do. Step one. He'll, good job he, at it. He'll, he'll get drunk with power. He'll be doing like sick burnouts in the Viper. But, you know, <laughs> do as I say, not a as Viper I do. Viper in every driveway. <laughs> Step one, airstrikes on the National Mall. <laughs> Listen, a Viper in every driveway. If Biden wants to win, mm -hmm. fucking two steps, end the genocide, Viper in every driveway. Uh, yeah, you got my fucking vote, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll fucking fundraise for you if I get the <laughs> Viper in every driveway. <laughs> Well, they've got the, the Dodge just came out with the the EV charger. Yes, I saw. Um, it makes it makes uh weird noises to simulate yeah. having yes. a rumble and a V eight mm, because uh -huh. it's essentially a large toy car. Cool for for men who are still thirteen mentally. Hey, <laughs> uh, but it does kind of look cool, which is the thing that I really hate to admit about it. Like I was looking at it, I was like, I really, really want to hate this, but it's kind of it's got like a little front wing thing. Anyway, I one digress. Of, one of the one of the smartest things American cops ever did, one of the few smart things was corner the market and dodge charges. To be like that this is the cop car now. Yeah. Yeah. It looks cool. I'm not gonna give evil. it to him. Like uh, Seattle mm. police drive uh explorers that look like they were like ripped from a fascist video game. They have like genuinely the most fascist ass the, the, like, uh, cop the, livery design of all yeah, time the, the, the cop suv moment has been a real mm. decline for me bring back the sedans yeah you can yeah. carry more stuff yeah you need to carry more stuff but like the aesthetics come on i like the yeah, i also um, live oh. like i also 
Oh, sorry. I like the Challenger better. I mean, that's objectively, it is the fascist car, but I just think it looks better. <laughs> American American cops drive Crown Victorias. Never should have stopped. Yeah, Crown uh, Crown Vicks are like, they were cool. I mean, they, the, my the, Caprice the, PPV, yeah. Oh, Caprices, oh, mwah. Delicious. Uh, I, you I know they my... brought those back in like 2013, right? Yes, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, no one bought them, but like my uh, yeah, they, they didn't my... sell well, them to did. civilians. Yeah, they didn't sell yeah. to civilians in the states. They were rebadged yeah, like only Commodores yeah. or something. Even then, but yeah. like the, the Ford you can buy now if you were a cop is like a Taurus, which or like yeah, we have those. an Explorer, and it just yeah. uh, you can no. also get a cop Ford Mustang Mach E. If you oh, would like your, if you would like your, if you would like your fascists to be environmentally friendly, New York has like a bajillion of them. Uh, Listen, I it, it make me in charge of the cops when you're climate Stalin. I will unify you. their aesthetic into something interesting. Oh, we could have Italian cops everywhere. Uh, that concerns me, Nova. Don't don't worry about it, and also don't worry about why all the cops have to be women and why they have to be like minimum six foot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is normal. Uh, <laughs> Doing a little Italian futurism, are we? <laughs> just a uh, just a little bit, yeah. Bringing the uh, curry binary to America, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just being a cop in like Seattle, and you have to wear like a dress cape and a sword. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I live like very close to the police station that got overrun during the um, protests in 2020. Mm. It was like right. Near, I live near the Chaz, the the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. If you remember that. Oh, one of the few um, times so, I've been owned on Twitter. Yeah, I recall. So, like, I remember. Uh, like there was, there's like footage of it wherever I moved here. I was like, oh yeah, I recognize that place. But there's like always 58 of these explorers parked outside, and I never see a cop standing outside at all. They always are in their cars or driving into the garage to like they, they are. I think they're literally afraid that they will catch gay from us. <laughs> Social alienation <laughs> is so sad. Yeah. Anyway, EVs. Uh, they the, the the problem is car dealerships. They're fascist. Uh, they can't they can't sell extended warranties. They can't sell catalytic converter etching. Although I have actually seen some very funny images of window stickers for like Ford F one fifty Lightnings, which are elect fully electric and do not have catalytic converters, with like an option for five hundred dollars in the window for catalytic converter etching, uh, where they put a serial number in it. So if somebody steals it, theoretically, you could I don't know track down the thief that did it and go <laughs> Liam Neeson taken on his ass. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like this kind is, of like mime car part thief. This is this yeah. is a big issue with electric cars when your well your entire business model is based on you know both selling the car and then doing long term maintenance on it. Is that the electric motor is so simple and so reliable that you know you can't you know do all of this maintenance which is associated from having an engine that has four thousand explosions a minute in it yeah. you know we, yeah. we, we might yeah. we might lose the ability to sustain this kind of american do-nothing gentry and replace them with like i don't know podcasters or something yeah that's yeah, us <laughs> yeah but so the, the other problem also here is that um they are not selling great at the moment <laughs> all, all of us and all of our children will be at like future left-wing equivalent january 6th <laughs> <laughs> this is what i always storm the car dealerships and see how they like it and take our gen one vipers <laughs> that we are entitled to that are our birthrights that's when we all we all storm uh langley <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's when we storm the capital after trump wins and we go start the steal <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, anyway, so like right now, so the the other picture here next to shove it up your ugly ass is uh, the Blazer EV, which is GM's very important first like Ultium platform. It's their new. Uh, this is supposed to define the future of EVs. It is R very raise, expensive. Raising hand, raising hand. Why does it have the fat ass that it has? It's very fat because ass. it is because in every meaningful metric, it is larger than every other midsize electric SUV. Gotcha. So they just, they were like, hmm, on paper, this is three inches wider. It's, we're getting to the point where like these things are big enough that we're close to needing marker lights on them. Um, because they're, cool. they're, they're over wide. You uh, this thing is oversized enormous. Banner on every single car. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a pickup truck following you with lights on it. <laughs> that's, what the, that's the niche the lightning is positioned for. <laughs> um, but so, you know. These were a very important launch. They they have like an all new infotainment system. Um, several reviewers, including myself, have gotten these and had the uh, in, the entire car crash. Not in terms of into a wall, but all of the software dies. The first reviewer vehicle I had for this on the first drive to test it for my job 
the entire operating system crashed and got stuck in a boot loop. And they had to give me a different SUV. This happened to uh, Edmonds and also one of my coworkers at my current job. Um, while he was on a road trip, notably, he was like stuck in rural Virginia without mm-hmm. a car because it just died on him when it was trying to charge. So uh, this is not helping sales. This is not there are there are kind of this it's not just tesla that is having like teething pains so to speak this is kind of there's a lot of pretty big products that are this is happening to right now um and people are also tired of paying they've sold everything that they can to people who have sixty thousand dollars to spend on suvs and so right now at the end of 2023 rather uh there was like a 114 day supply of evs across the industry which is a ton that is that is months of supply just sitting up sitting on dealership uh, parking lots, taking up space, not earning commission for people. You know, this is, it's catastrophic uh, as far as like actually making these a feasible strategy. And next slide, please. So this is, this is the engineering disaster that is capitalism, Um, which I know this is a new twist for the show. I apologize Mm. for bringing that in now. Yeah, we're about um, to we're about to radicalize hmm. everybody into like Antifa Gen Six. Yeah, um, yeah. Off this shit. <laughs> yeah. So, so the the graph here that I have, which starts at around eight hundred dollars and is kind of leveled out around one hundred and forty bucks, uh, is price in twenty twenty three dollars per kilowatt hour for lithium ion batteries. Um, the the thing is, is that batteries were supposed to break below this magical price of a hundred dollars per kilowatt hour, and they have not. Uh, they have been steadily le- leveling off and barring like some incredible improvement in battery technology or solid state batteries. Uh, this is not getting cheaper. That one, um, that as- one fucking uh, like Russian girl who claimed to have invented the like room temperature superconductor fucked oh, yeah. us on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Russia. Speaking of which, uh, do you know what they have a lot of there? Uh, rare earths. Yes, but you need um, to build vehicles. batteries too. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will speak on that a bit later in the podcast. That's fair. Um, but yeah, so like all of the materials that are required to build batteries are hard to get. Um, hard and often it, unethical to get. Oh, extremely. Oh, yeah. I didn't even. I. I literally was like, okay, we're at slide sixteen. I probably should talk about a limited number of things, and I stuck to the space I know the best, but. There are serious environmental issues with EVs, and there has been research done that we shows flash that it, up it, the Elon Musk "We will coup whoever we want" tweet. Here, yeah, please. yeah. Not just lithium, mind you. Like all of these rare earths, right. fucking niobium and like coltan and shit. Cobalt. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a huge amount of like uh, exploitation behind uh, all of these. It's super cool that uh, the internet is now broken, and I cannot find stories that my coworkers wrote. Um, <laughs> Ideal, say. yeah. I that I remember reading that I was going to cite from. I, in any case, the, we're running into the problem of you know these are the, the economies of scale we were hoping for have not worked out, and we keep building these enormous enormous EVs that are very expensive, such as the Hummer EV. Which weighs nine thousand dollars. It's going to it's going to collapse every parking garage. It, it, the it battery into. pack, the battery pack in the Hummer EV weighs more than my last car did. Jeez. It is two thousand eight hundred pounds. I had a nineteen eighty nine Camry that weighed like twenty seven hundred pounds. Um. So you know, it's you know, so we're we're building these massive things. So you're we're consuming more lithium to get them going, and so was, like was the lith- was the like electric Hummer built for anyone in the world other than Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, is it dweeb and people Philly who like who really admire the Frey Corps? I'm not sure. Mm. <laughs> so so yeah, so that there's economic problems. So what we what we're running into, you know, the the innovation that's been happening in the market is that this is incredibly high end. Uh, the pictures here of the Aspark Owl, which, as far as I can tell, actually hasn't been built, which is a pretty common theme with a lot of these like startup companies. Uh, yes. But it was going to sell for three point one million dollars and have a zero to sixty times like one point six seconds or something. I don't know. It's 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 a number is really high. Car goes very fast. Uh, the car below it is the Lotus Lotus Evija. That's two point three million. It does exist. Some of my coworkers have driven it. Um, it's apparently very cool. Uh, it goes very very fast. Again, it has this the is, like hot wheels effect, but yeah, this is the problem with. Um, I'm sure those wheels get pretty hot. I mean, yeah. 
<laughs> this is the problem with EVs as uh, a an individual consumption product, right? Uh, a lot of the EVs that were built up until very recently were loss leaders. They were re required. You know, that e-golf that I showed the diagram of when we first started this presentation was not a car that All folks can build to make ago. money. Yeah, like like uh, you know the the Fiat 500 EV that used to be sold in in California to meet emissions requirements. Like Sergio Marchione famously, who was president of Chrysler at the time, famously hated them because he was like, "We lose so much money on all of these. I can't stand the fact that we have to make them." Um, and so the thing is, is no one's ever actually solved this problem all that well. And so we have we like you look at the companies that have broken into the space successfully, like Rivian. Um, or Polestar, and what they do is they build largely expensive EVs. They build, they build. You know, Rivians are seventy or eighty grand. Um, Polestars, I think their cheapest one starts at like forty five or something, which is kind of average nowadays, but is still a lot of money for most people. Mm. Um, and all of this breakthrough to like, oh, if we just build the expensive ones, they'll eventually come down in price, has not happened. And so what we have done is. With a lack of any charging infrastructure, the, the requirement basically to own a home to be able to charge your EV, uh, and the, the really high purchase price, what we've got is like a bunch of rich people play things, and then like upper middle class guilt assuagers. They're not actually solving any structural problems, uh, because unfortunately, you can't really solve structural problems by buying things. Fuck. That's what I've been trying to do. Yes. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe that. Yeah, and so like, you know, the the only thing that might fix this is like solid state batteries might come through, uh, which Toyota has been working on and they've been like 15 years away from for the past 30 years. Uh, <laughs> they say they're getting close. Who the hell knows? That would that would change things drastically because then you could have a thousand mile range uh, EVs that weigh like a tenth as much, you know, like it's it changes all of your scale so drastically. They're supposed to fix all of these problems, use fewer resources. Um, but, you know, that's that's not something we have. Um, so what people need to do is like buy plug-in hybrids or whatever, uh, but nobody wants to do that because they're not they're not status symbols then. Mm, um, and yeah. Americans, of course, you know, need like a big engine to feel like they're sufficient as people. Need a big V8 because it's smooth. V10, V10. V10. Oh, even better. Well, I mean, V12. to 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 Ram's credit, they just swapped out the V8 in the Ram for a, an inline six. Um, it gets the exact same mileage as the V8 did, oh, but they God. did at least get rid of two cylinders. <laughs> Basically a BMW now. Gonna buy an SD45. I got a V24. <laughs> <laughs> Big diesel prime mover. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so I mean the the, the disaster is society. Mm. Again? Unfortunately. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> appears to be the issue. Yeah. Um I just listen. I I I got on this podcast so to talk about uh, wings falling off of planes. To, to stick and now, to engineering. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now all of a sudden, this woke shit. You tell me that like <laughs> it's society or whatever. Hold on, no. I got some engineering for you. But first, I got to use the restroom. Please. <laughs> when you said, but first, it primes me to go to the drop. So I'm like, do I have a like Justin goes to the restroom drop? Do, do I have one? I don't. I really don't think I do. Um, but yeah, no, Shit I mean, not I, my I, hands. I, I'm not my hands. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm doing driving lessons at the moment. Uh, my test is on May first. Um, and oh, if I, my, my name gets legally changed like right after that. Oh hell yeah! Uh, Two big accomplishments. Yeah, well, if if I pass, uh, it, it, if if not, then one big accomplishment. This is um, also famously a requirement to get your name changed. <laughs> 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 I, I hope we both pass. Um, and yeah, but I, I, I guess if I do, I'm going to have to think about getting a car. Um, and oh my God. We hey, could devote a whole I gotta, we could do an entire episode. We could do an entire yeah, what, episode what about the this. Kind of what the Nova Mobile is going to be. Because um, one Viper. You, you, it's difficult to import a like Waz Bohanka into the fucking UK. Uh, and there's very few. There was Gaz twenty one for sale near me, and I was like, "What if I did this?" Yeah, what if you did? It would be <sighs> fucking sick. Is the thing it would you be can so fix cool. It with a hammer. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, fuck, I'm probably gonna end up with like a golf or something. But um... I mean, the problem that I have ultimately is that like I I know all of these things about structural issues, right? I know that like in general, you cannot consume your way out of a problem. But for me, a car would fix me. 
Mm. I've and been I think learning a lot of other people, yeah. a car could fix I them. That. So I, I've been learning to drive in a Golf, and the thing about driving a Golf is that it is fucking idiot-proof. Uh, at least the new ones, because what, you what can't... What year? Uh, I, like, last, like, 2023. Um, oh, okay. there's, there's nothing you can do to this. It tells you when to change gears. It fucking... Yeah, uh, a lot of cars do that. Is, is this common? People, yeah. people brag about being good drivers. This shit is easy. You just haven't seen me drive. Hmm. Well, hope to. All right, let's look at some engineering problems. Um, now, we've talked a lot about uh, largely, you know, we're talking about electric vehicles in terms of vehicles for consumers, right? That's something that, you know, spends 99% yeah. of its life in a parking, uh, parking spot or in a garage. Um, let's talk about commercial vehicles. Let's fleet, talk about electric vehicles. trucks. Fuck yeah. I, this <laughs> is the thing, right? This thing sucks. I hate it. I hate the way it looks. But... It is cab over engine, and therefore I have to respect it because cab over engines. The U.S. market has been deprived of these for too long. I think they're cool. Oh yeah, cab overs look great. I love like an old fashioned cab over. But yeah. the, the other thing is like that barely even means anything on a Tesla semi, such as what you're seeing here. Um, this sort of looks like uh, fucking. Uh, what am I looking at? I'm looking at Voldemort without the nose slits. You know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not to not to bring Harry Potter into this, but you know. Um, I also, also like how it broke down towing a truck full of lays, which are ninety percent air by volume anyway. You notice it also <laughs> has Frito Lay decals on the uh, truck. So you know, well, there's there's a reason for that. Yeah, I, um, I paid an extra four ninety nine for the American Truck Simulator Frito Lay Pack DLC. So we've been talking about electric semi trucks for you know probably a de decade now. They barely exist, right? Um, mm. I think there's like uh, Freightliner does some kind of like E Cascadia model, and there's the Tesla Semi, which still has not really launched. I think a couple prototypes exist, and that's basically all there is. Um, you know, and and so electric semis are not taking off the way electric cars are, and electric cars aren't taking off that much at all. Um, you know, there's some reasons for this. It comes down to like energy density, range, charging time. These big commercial vehicles need to be run constantly to be economically viable, right? Right now, these electric trucks, they don't go very far. The batteries are very heavy. You have weight limits, so you know you don't want to go over 80,000 pounds. You don't want to spend all that weight limit on the batteries, right? Um, they take longer to charge at the very few commercial charging stations that exist. Right. So if you are, let's say you're hauling chips from the Frito Lay's factory to the Frito Lay's warehouse, then maybe it makes sense to get an electric semi because you can charge that at the factory. You can charge it at the warehouse. If you're someone like a, a, a common carrier, like, um, you know, a trucking company that moves anything from anywhere to anywhere else. Or if you're a private operator, you own your rig and you are taking on contracts right now, you're screwed. You can't buy an electric truck. It just will not work because, um, A, there's oh. no there's no way to charge it. Um, yeah. And to that point, like the only the only places I've seen that have had success with uh, electric like vehicles like this are like school buses where they have like a five mile route that they stop and right. go a bunch yeah and then they come back to a central place mm -hmm. every day at 3 p.m and they can oh, plug yeah. them all back oh. in yeah. the postal service postal once service again. is another good candidate if you have like a fleet vehicle like maintenance vehicles for like a city or something that makes a lot of sense um but if you're trying to go from anywhere to anywhere else especially over long distances this is a big problem because there's no charging infrastructure and because the range isn't great, and because of just the sheer energy consumption of a big rig. Um, which is where I sort of want to talk about uh, relative energy density of batteries. As the, as the dream of cab over engine recedes once again yes. from the American roadscape. So um, this is the most up-to-date chart I could find on short notice. Um, energy density of lithium ion battery packs, 2008 to 2020, we can see, hey, there's a nice exponential curve here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, effective accelerationism. 
thing going thing getting exactly better. exactly how many watt hours can you fit into a, a liter of space we're at 450 um and and i will note that 450 is like really cutting edge really cutting there edge. Are, yep. yeah there are there are cars on the market right now that are 160 to 200 because they can't get enough nickel and so they had to go to a, a worse lithium-ion chemistry now if we compare this to gasoline that is ninety five hundred. <laughs> um, this is a big issue with fossil fuels: is that they're really good <laughs> in some of these metrics. Diesel is even more. Diesel is uh, ten thousand seven hundred and twenty two watt hours per liter. Jesus. Um, you know, and per unit of mass, it's worse. Um, Victoria mentioned 300 watt hours per kilogram for li lithium ion versus 12,666 for diesel, 12,888 oh, yeah. for cat. These are, these are 50 fold increases through using fossil fuels. We have a lot of way to go with batteries. Um, Please, please, Russian transgender women, invent the superconductor. I was about to say, I, you know, some, someone's got to figure that one out. I, this is important. It, it, it's not so important to consumer vehicles because, you know, unless you're doing a road trip, um, this is not normally a problem. But again, if you're on a semi truck, uh, if you're on anything that needs to do, like needs a high duty cycle, uh, something that works all day, like, say, a garbage truck, um, mm -hmm. this is a big problem. Um, if you if you listener are sitting around thinking I might invent the semiconductor today, but I'm probably not going to. No, oh, they invented the fucking... semiconductor. You're thinking of a superconductor. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you if you're going to invent the semiconductor, just do it again for fun. Yeah. Uh, maybe this time you'll do it in a way that, like, I don't know. Got uh, some leads. gallium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think gallium is just a transition metal. Um, it's not I, a, not a, a, no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know my periodic table anymore. That's way pet. I don't, I don't know anything anymore. I'm. I'm fully gone off of like a pack of custard creams and one and a half <laughs> bottles of water. Yeah. I, well done. Thank you. <laughs> so if you have a, a length limit to the trailer, you have a weight limit to the truck and trailer. You have a weight limit as well. Um, you don't have a lot of room to spare to have a huge battery pack. Um. And again, I'm not I'm not super on the up and up with current battery technology. The best of my knowledge to really start to keep these exponential improvements going. At this point, you need new battery chemistries. And of course, the years of development associated with that, like these exponential improvements are still years off just to match the sheer raw energy density of gasoline or diesel. Get um, on it, nerds. Yeah. You know, there's lots of weird stuff now, like uh, reversible rusting and stuff like that, which I don't fully understand. The current state of lithium-ion battery packs, though, it's it's kind of, how are you going to put this in a truck, let alone yeah, a train, enough. which is the other thing. If you, you this is mm. an old episode of ours, go look up our battery electric locomotives episode. But <laughs> you know, this is yeah. I I sort of I I come back to the thing that we said in the geoengineering episode so, is cope, which is like that's going to be fine. They'll invent yeah. something. <laughs> Just fucking hurry up with it, please. So what we're what I'm what I I looked this up really quick. So solid state battery is the miracle tech that I told you would need to, you know, needs to basically come along to make EV cars a reasonable proposition for people. Um, is around one thousand watt hour, hours a liter, which still makes it twelve times less efficient than gasoline. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's, or ten times, sorry. Ten times. It's not it's not a uh the, this, still an order of magnitude. Yeah, this is this is kind of uh, ooh, you know. There's other technologies we could use here. Um, another small. Uh, have you has anybody heard of reactor. trains? Yeah, small I'll nuclear reactor is my vote. Okay. Here's another fun one. <laughs> so, over here is the city of Roanoke, Virginia. Hmm. Right, as a oh, population. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's the Star City. Um, it has, uh, you know, it's where Maya Linda lives. Uh, they have not uh, figured out grids when they built this one, I see. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's the mountains are all around it. It's kind of confined in there. 
very nice place. I recommend visiting the Star City, Roanoke, Virginia. It has a population of about 100,000 people. The city uses 1,450,000 megawatt hours per year, according to a website I found. This is hard information to find, and I had limited time. Um, Megawatt hours are the worst unit imaginable. Like, watt hours, I hate them. That's just a, a way of expressing energy through power. It should be like joules. It would make everything easier for us. Um, doing dimensional analysis on this to find the constant power draw or the average power draw, we got to divide it by the number of hours in a year to get the constant power draw. This, this, this is too much engineering. Can we go back to the society, please? <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours times 365 and a quarter days to account for leap years. <laughs> <laughs> That's 8,760. 8, the city has a constant power draw of 165 megawatts, right? If I did that math wrong, I apologize. I had a beer while I was doing it. Don't apologize. Um, Fuck them. The first time I did this, I came with a came up with a number that was about four times higher. I don't know if I fucked up. Um, four, four Roanoke's. Yeah. So now down here is the Safe Harbor Dam on the Susquehanna River. Woo! It has a total installed capacity of four hundred seventy what four hundred and seventeen megawatts including two turbines, which are rated at 33 megawatts each. That provides about a third of the power for the Amtrak Northeast Corridor, at least between Washington, D.C. and New York City, because the phase changes beyond that. It's 25 hertz south of New York City. It's 60 hertz north of New York City. The peak loading on the corridor is about 210 megawatts. Um, but, you know, this entire dam dedicated to the corridor is making... I believe 66 megawatts from the turbines, and then they have a rotary inverter there that bop, bumps it up to 81 megawatts. And that's where I want to compare this to the unincorporated community of Rafine, Virginia. Oh, she's not beautiful. Well, there's a little town up Rafine Road. Um, and uh, so this is about... This is the, someone, someone listens to this podcast in this town sooner or later we're gonna like zoom Take in and we're the, gonna like the earth <laughs> we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna be like this is one guy's house yours is your like, shitty house <laughs> and we'll read their full address yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so rafine virginia has several large truck stops I will note that I it's not a that single. It has a restaurant called uh, Quaker Steak and Lube. Oh, it's yeah. real Quaker good. Quaker Steak and Lube actually goes insanely slaps, hard. Yeah, <laughs> like, I I like buffalo wings, what the and it's not what like the fuck kind of American activation <laughs> phrase have I said to make all three of you? <laughs> I don't. I don't it, I've never Their been to Quaker Steak lube. and Lube. The website is, is the it, is lube it, com. Is, is it, it water or silicone based? What do you? <laughs> They're, all of their all of their restaurants are like Americana themed. So they've got like Corvettes hanging from the ceiling and stuff. Oh, it's slaps. Yeah, I used to, I used to go hard. when I, when I used to go drifting. We would always stop at a Quaker Steak and Lube on the way home and pull up with all of our shitty ass two forty SXs and stuff. So cool. And like hard park in the parking lot and eat chicken wings. It was so. It was. It, it's amazing. But, it's but, an American but, but, institution. I will not let, allow you to shit talk it. it. Explain to me, blue boils. How 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 <laughs> they get into the fucking steak. It's because it looks like it. So with, I think what they originally did, I don't know. I, why am burgers. I talking about this? They make steak They're, burgers. They make steak burgers. And also like every single one of them looks like an old timey garage. Oh, it fucking rules. I love so I think it's supposed to be like they, they serve steak and they supposed to look. They have this like whole Americana Route 66 like aesthetic going on. So it's uh -huh. like an old lube shop. Like they used to they, like, you know, Jiffy Lube or something, an oil change place. It's a garage you go into and you, you come out. <laughs> you can order the, ki the kids lube cruisers. <laughs> Don't. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's three separate truck stops here. There are. <laughs> there's White's Travel Center here. This has 16 pumps. They have an Irish car bob on the menu. They call Jesus it the Irish Christ. drop shot. That is, a, that is a car bob, and it's just on the menu. There's the Pilot Travel Center <laughs> up here. <laughs> Fuck you. That has 12 pumps. 
And there's over here, there's smileys, which if you've ever been down I-81, you'll see many signs for the best dang BBQ in Virginia. It was pretty good. It's okay. It was pretty good. Sh- sh- should have gone to the steak and lube. Did we go to smileys? Hadn't... Yeah, we've been to smileys, but... When did we go to smileys? We went to smileys on the way back uh, from your aunt's house. All right, we did. Yeah, yeah, you, okay. you guys just engage in these fucking odysseys, you know? No, the um... thing about smileys is when you they have a sports bar inside smileys. And when you when yeah. you order the barbecue, what they do is they don't make the barbecue fresh. They go down to the gas station side, and then they take one of the pre wrapped sandwiches and plate it nicely for you. You wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, I did want to go. I wanted to finally see what it was like. You wanted to you wanted to try the best dang BBQ in Virginia. It's it, fine. It was pretty good. I thought <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. This one has six pumps. Um, so. <laughs> Rayfeen is actually an exceptionally large truck stop. I will admit this, but I'm proving a point here. Um, right now, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fill up a big semi truck with diesel because they got really big tanks. There's a limit to the amount of diesel you can shove in there at once, right? The newest plugs out there, which are called the megawatt charging system, the MCS, they're starting to implement it in Europe in a few demonstrator points. They still take about 30 minutes to fill up a truck with juice. At three point seventy five megawatts, three and a, three and three quarters it's, megawatts. It's a beefy connection. Yes, like you d- do not be fucking with those cables. Yeah, um, I I wouldn't want to be within a mile of that thing. <laughs> um, the more conventional systems that exist right now take about ninety minutes. So conservatively, if you wanted to electrify this truck stop, we need more pumps. I just figured like a third more. Right, so about 12 more, make the whole complex 48 pumps total, and you multiply 48 by three and three quarters megawatts, that's 180 megawatts. So at busy hours, the sleepy, unincorporated community of Rayfeen, Virginia, in Rockbridge County, would draw more power than the big city of Roanoke, and nearly as much power as rush hour on the entire Amtrak Northeast Corridor. Large nuclear reactor, like a lot of cheap, them. too cheap to meter. I mean, that's sort of where you have to go. And even then, I mean, big nuclear reactor is still only five hundred megawatts. You need to build one for every couple truck stops. I mean, all right, let's let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I work in America in the shade of the cooling tower. <laughs> yeah, with a Quaker steak and loop. Yeah. <laughs> Going to Bucky's and they have an entire uh, nuclear power plant giant... just for the gas <laughs> <Yeah>. station. <laughs> Nova, are you familiar with Bucky's? Oh, I'm aware. Okay. Well, I used to think it was called Bucy's. <laughs> like Bucy's. Yeah. Bucy's. Yeah. <laughs> Bust that Bucy open, boy. <laughs> uh, hold on, I have something for this. Blue boils. Hang on. <laughs> well, this has been lovely. Yeah. So. You know, this is this is the sort of thing that keeps me up at night when you talk about electrifying like trucking or cars or anything like that. You know, where does this energy come from? We use about four thousand terawatt hours of electricity in the United States just to electrify trucking. We need to find about find about five hundred more terawatt hours in the couch somewhere. And that has nothing that's to say nothing about building all the transmission wires, all the stuff like that. You know, this is where you maybe you want to look and say, should we think about other systems, right? Yeah, so that the town of Rafine, Virginia, doesn't have American Chernobyl number 596 in it. It's not Ra- Rafine, it's Rafine. It's Rafine. is very. So the, the, I gave so up the my ability to pronounce words in other languages so I know what they are in Appalachia, and also sometimes I can get Algonquin right in the first try. <laughs> the uh the, the unincorporated one sixteenth Cherokee on my mama's side, one eighth on my daddy's side. <laughs> the, the unincorporated Virginia community of Rafe Fines oh, will operate <laughs> will operate a large nuclear reactor. Yeah, oh, I can't wait to take you to Appalachia. They'll yeah. love me. They, yeah. they will absolutely love me. They will love you, and if they don't, we'll I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was about to say, I will absolutely dump society, anybody's body in the New River Gorge. Society <laughs> built on mutual respect. This is this is the Appalachia tour sort of T-shirt. Is uh, you'll love us, and if we don't, we'll kill you. 
Yeah. Just just a note. So there was a story that I I wrote like today that is going out on Friday. So probably by the time this podcast is live. That's funny. Um, just about like uh, electricity use in cars. Um, the the computing power for self driving vehicles. Just if you were curious, if you if you made every single one of the one point four seven billion cars on Earth self driving, which people want to do with these trucks, for the record. Um, it would require more electricity to run the computing systems for it than the entire country of Argentina uses. <laughs> so uh-huh. throw that in on top of all the electrification yeah. just to get the truck to go. Yes. There's a, there's a fun thing about buses that's similar to that, which we'll get to. Um, some people have suggested, and in fact, in Germany, they have implemented as a demonstrator project. What if the truck got electricity from overhead wires? Which what a just fucking build a train. Concept. That's a you, you are getting closer and closer to inventing a train from first principles. You have a lower average power draw, although uh, you're still drawing the same amount of power. Um, you know, and you have electricity transmission over the road, which is nice, right? So that solves some of the problems. Uh, overhead wire power has an energy density of infinity, which is much better than gasoline. And it's more than 12,000. Yes. But apparently these things don't work as well as they're supposed to. Um, the idea here is that you have the truck. The truck has the pair of panographs because railroads can get away with one panograph because the rails carry the return current. Um, on a truck, you have to have one for the current, one for the return current. Um, these trucks travel a long distance at constant speed. You can put up wires. They either charge in motion, they use the energy to assist a diesel engine, or they can rely entirely on this overhead power. The panographs on the top of the truck are supposed to be completely automatic. They can detect when the truck is in the right lane. They automatically, uh, raise and lower. When the truck needs to change lanes, they they can just you can just do that, right? Um, and the issue is, there's a lot of room here to fuck up. Mm. Why would I just build a train? Oh my god, I'm, Tw- I'm twice as much room just on the wiring side. Yeah, because if, if, if you is bad for you, you have to mm. swerve randomly, and you swerve back in the lane. Maybe you take the wires down. You electrocute everyone on the road. Um, you know, the, the panograph may or may not work reliably all the time. This is still very new technology. Um, you know, the idea of raising and lowering the panograph on a train is still like very controversial. Um, discontinuous, uh, catenary is a, a, a very contentious issue just because of the engineering difficulties here. They propose to solve it entirely with sensors, which is not, not a great idea. Just, just, just yeah, they have, have they have disc- discontinuous pantographs on the uh, streetcars in Seattle, and I can outwalk them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I mean, just just give, give everything the kind of like um, like class three nine five thing of like having to switch from pantograph to like uh, third rail uh, at Faversham or whatever. Cool. Yeah, here Everyone here would be like okay, it's automatically raising and lowering if I have to pass on another lane. Um, I just assume the computer will get it right every single time, right? Um, and if it doesn't, then really bad things will happen. <laughs> hey, a failure mode of everyone dies is acceptable for other industries. Yeah. Uh, and yet, and yet we turn up our nose at the humble, massive municipal nuclear reactor. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... Uh, trains don't have this problem because trains do not usually make unplanned uh, lane shifts. Um, <laughs> and you got a lot more wear and tear on this catenary than railroad catenary uh, because of the sheer volume of trucks going by in order to move a given amount of stuff. You got exponentially more points of failure. Um, I, I don't see this working very well in the long run. Um, this is just not not a great we'll get the modal shift in a bit but th- this this may be better than batteries in that it sort of works right now but you know mm. it works long enough for you to take like a publicity photo of it mm-hmm. well they have like 
a dozen or so miles in Germany right now. They just installed wow. some at the Port of Los Angeles as a demonstrator, wow. like a one mile demonstrator. Wow. Now, one thing that people may point out here is that, Look okay, we this. do have, in fact, overhead power wired buses, right? Have yeah, we have pictures so cool? Trolley bus. Yeah. Yeah, we have trolley Newport buses. Alive with pleasure, I believe is what that ad says. Yeah. Yes. Mm hmm. You need to get into smoking, Victoria. Get back. Oh, we got. I used to. David. I smoked for six years. <laughs> yeah, I remember when you quit because you used to message me every twenty minutes, being like, "I want a cigarette real bad," and I would be like, "Don't smoke a cigarette." <laughs> yeah, you helped me significantly with that. I d oh, so yes, so I, I did my what time. About, what about dip? We could start dipping. <laughs> You're a horrible influence. <laughs> Thank you. This is on Route seventy nine in South Philly. Um. So we've had electric vehicles on overhead wire for a long time in the form of trolley buses. In this case, they call it a trackless trolley. Um, the big advantage here is that instead of having the pantograph, you have the two trolley poles, and they are linked to the wire um, so that you can change lanes and still be connected. Um, the disadvantage here is that if there's another vehicle on the trolley wire, you can't pass it. And if you if you dewire, like the trolley poles fall off the wire, which is, they're a lot more reliable than they used to be. It's still a problem. Uh, you have to manually put the poles back on the wires. You got to get out of the bus. You got to go to the back. There's a cable that's attached to them. You got to put them back on manually. These sort of also tend to be low speed systems. So I think some of the modern European systems are like 50 miles an hour or more. And I'm sure whatever SEPTA is doing in the Northeast right now, those drivers are gunning it. They, they love going fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> they really fucking do. Flat out, like foot down. So these are a lot more, these are a lot more practical for public transit than like long haul travel. I don't think you could rig up trolley poles, uh, trolley wires over like the entire interstate. Um, I don't think you could do like the old super Mario brothers movie where, Everything ran on trolley poles. <laughs> <laughs> so you think, okay, we, we solved it, right? We have an electric vehicle that works pretty reliably, um, that can be scaled arbitrarily. Um, these buses can be quite large because they have an infinite amount of energy they can pull from the wires. So what did we actually do? Are we expanding them? No. It looks as if no. you put them into a tunnel. Yes, so this is one of the underground stations on the MBTA, the Metropolitan Boston Transit Authority. Um, they decided in 2021 their trolley buses had had it. It was time to move to battery electric future. As such, uh, as such the Cambridge mm. bus barn was going to be converted for battery buses, which, I mean, okay, at least the, the bus barn has the electric service in this case. Um, which is going to be a problem for converting a lot of other bus uh, systems. Um, since major road work was happening on several roads where the trolley buses ran and they weren't intending on renewing the trolley buses or the trolley bus infrastructure, the MBTA just got rid of them. Uh, the wires came down in 2022, I want to say. Great, cool. Lost technology. Again. Yeah, yeah. Um, MBTA, Damn it. MBTA's excuse for this is that, okay, um, you know, a lot of advocates came forward and they said, well, big cities like uh, San Francisco or Seattle, they were able to keep and maintain their trolley systems. Uh, and they said, we're not a big city like San Francisco or Seattle. Other advocates came by and said, well, you know, a city like Dayton, Ohio has kept their trolley bus system in order and they're expanding it. And they said, well, we're not a we're small not a city like Dayton. Like <laughs> <laughs> We're we're a medium sized city, I guess, which means we can't do shit. Um, mm. <laughs> so Route seventy one and seventy three are now operating with diesel buses, with the promise of battery buses in the future, um, including segments in unventilated tunnels. Oh, we went back to the like London Underground back in the day. Yes, um, and also Just die. Just get in the bus and die. Since these trolley bus uh, lines were converted streetcar lines, all the trolley buses they had had a special door for left-hand boarding. The buses they're currently running do not have left-hand boarding. Oh my god. So, 
Everyone has to crowd around the front of the bus and squeeze against the wall to get in. <laughs> okay. That's beautiful. I would also like it noted that I live in the big city of Seattle. And we are also currently buying a bunch of battery electric buses instead of building more oh. trolley lines because they don't want to – because the problem is, is that here they're like, well, we have trolley buses and we do have a lot of trolley buses. Um, we run fully hybrids otherwise. But the thing is, is they're like, well, every time we put up a trolley line, we have to fight through 12 billion small Hitler landowners who are mad yes. about a wire in front of their house. Yes. Um, and the silent buses that run on the line. And so instead, we've decided to capitulate and do battery electric buses. Now, I love the King County Metro because they're, they get me places. I, again, auto journalist who does not own a car. But mm -hmm. I, it's worth noting that this is a solved problem. Yeah, uh, this is uh, for public transit. This has been like very easy to fix for a very long time. You put up the wires, you put down the rails if it's enough like uh, density of uh, traffic. You know, this is th this is not difficult. This is a solved problem. This is technology with like a nearly a century and a half of development on it. At this point, we are as perfected with trolley buses as we ever will be. And we're just barely, you know, it, we're assuming there's going to be a lot of development on batteries that we don't know about yet. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, well, it's like carbon capture again. It's like, well, well, we'll, we'll come up with something. Oh, carbon also, capture like, is a violation of thermod thermodynamics. I mean, that, that has no future whatsoever. Come on. <laughs> I mean, the other thing, too, is like they're building these giant charging stations, stations for the battery buses in Seattle. And like that is its own logistical problem, because as you pointed out, it takes as much energy as a small town to run. Uh, whereas, you know, you could just I, I don't know how trolley line electrification goes, but I assume that it is slightly you have, easier. You have a uh, more constant power draw. You don't have these surges. Um, the other thing is when SEPTA uh, redid one of their bus barns for electric buses, we'll get to on the next slide, what they wound up having to do was reactivating a bunch of trolley infrastructure to uh, supply the power. Yeah. So they just they have should do. the trolley infrastructure. They just don't use it. We should go back to the Milwaukee Road method, which is to build a bunch of beautiful Art Deco brick power stations. Yes. Right next to your lines. And then we should just make it like an art installation. <laughs> so this is not confined to Boston. We did it in Philly, too. Um. <laughs> This is Route 79 on Snyder Avenue. This is the same route as that bus I showed earlier. Mm -hmm. back Looks in, beautiful. Back in 2003, they converted it to diesel with an express promise to the neighborhoods uh, that we will replace the diesel buses with electric buses as soon as possible. So this happened in 2003, and 14 years later... <laughs> <laughs> they were delivered some of these nice new Proterra battery buses, right? Yep. And they they ran for a few months, and the frames cracked because they're made of fiberglass, and the batteries are heavy. What? Uh, oh my god! Yep. And there's lots of potholes in Philly. <laughs> this particular one caught fire after being stored for a long time. It just decided one day I'm going to catch fire. Fuck yourself. <laughs> um, I love lithium. Yeah. Route 79 is still run with diesel hybrid buses. Um, a lot of these battery buses have been plagued with problems like basically everywhere. Um, I understand they're doing a little better in Europe. Um, I understand that the new flyer buses sort of work, but they don't run well in the cold. The range is not as well as expected, um, especially with a vehicle that has a high duty cycle. Because you still got to supply all that electricity, you're still building a lot of fixed infrastructure. Uh, battery buses also have compounded problems because the largest energy draw on the bus isn't necessarily the motors. It's the massive HVAC system that's needed to keep the thing warm when the doors open every block. Huh. Yep. Yeah. The only place that's, you know, managed to square this circle, to my knowledge, is uh, Moscow. So the insane mayor of Moscow decided sometime <laughs> back in like 2012, we're getting rid of the world's largest trolley bus network and replacing with battery buses. The first battery buses they got 
couldn't maintain traction and the heating system simultaneously. So now in Moscow, which has one of the first all-electric bus fleets, uh, the electricity supplies the motors, and there's a big diesel burner in the back that runs the heating system. Fuck yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, coal furnace in the back. This is Russian excellence. <laughs> we're, we're almost back to the days of the atmospheric railway, where it also runs a grill, you know? Yeah. This is, this is the new fryer. <laughs> so, I don't know. Just put up wires. I mean... Got a train. It's got a yeah, train. Well, you know, a, a lot of this is always, you know, the argument for this is the climate. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff that's a lot hard, harder to decarbonize than people give it credit for. But I will say, if you're if you're really worried about the climate, the big thing should be modal shift. Just mm. move people onto trains, onto buses, get people on bicycles. Just move freight if you, if you onto try, trains. If you, you try know? and drive a car in an unjustifiable way, climate style and Liam comes up in the Viper and executes you. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the one car that is allowed to drive. The nice thing about trains is they run on steel wheels with steel rails. There's very little energy loss when you're coasting. If you have an electric system, the energy you expend going up the hill you can almost always recover going down the hill. It's ridiculous how energy efficient trains are. Um, you know, it's 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 not it. Uh, rubber tires have a lot of friction. That's why cars can accelerate fast. That's also why they require a lot of an energy. <laughs> they also dump a shitload of like microplastics and like yeah. um, uh, sort of like other really horrible things into the air. Like three quarters of your blood is tire rubber. At this yeah, point. I mean yeah, that's, that, cool. that's how I I stopped worrying I mean, about more, more if you ride in the Viper. I had I had microplastics paranoia for a bit. And then I found out, oh, that's not from like plastic food containers. That's from no. tires. It's all tires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the car tires are the kind of lead paint of our time. Yes. Lead paint, lead gasoline. Um, mm. And now a plastic rubber combination. Yeah. Uh, so, you spawn. know, it'd be, it'd be nice if, if we could just do modal shift as opposed to, I don't know, dancing around. We're going to electrify cars. We're going to electrify every trucks. car on steel wheels gonna... and turn all the roads into rails. I'm not saying that we're not going to have cars or trucks. I am. We like, should do that. Yeah, well, no, okay. I need a job. Please. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can review the new rail cars. Yeah. There you go. I have wanted to do a car review for a train for so long. Come to, come, no to, come to Britain. We have trains. You can review them. Uh, we have trains here. Yeah, well, but Baltimore like, Trolley Museum will Britain. let you drive a trolley, I believe. Oh my god. Yes. That would be a fun car review. Talk about the pickup on my, you know, 12,000 horsepower uh, diesel electric train. Yeah, train and driver. Oh no, it's a trolley. It's, you can drive a PCC. It has foot pedals. It's weird. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what how horsepower went on there. It's probably like 100. <laughs> road and track. Instead of road and track, it's track. Oh my god. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, you I'm very tired. Yeah, let's let's try and move this along. <laughs> yeah. So, Sorry. No, no, no it's my fault too. What did we learn? Ban uh, cars. Give Liam the Viper. Give me the Viper. Give, yeah. give me the uh, the Fuji XC4. Uh, and then when you are driving your car and you're like, I know this is an unjustifiable journey. I should just walk, but I think I can get away with it. And you see. The like black on black murdered out viper coming up on you. <laughs> uh, you. You will know that you are about to die. It will be just, and also I will get a really high resolution photo of you being murdered. Uh, well, that, well, there's your problem, climate style in one billion years. Oh, yes, you, thank you. You know, uh, one day we'll get an episode where I can expound all my weird opinions about fossil fuels. <laughs> Do you want to just do a fossil fuels bonus? Oh, yes. that would be fun. Do you want to just write that and just we just do it this month? Yeah, well, they're actually really good is the problem. The problem is do they're we... really good. Well, do you <laughs> want to write that up in the form of a podcast with slides and then we yeah. do it in the next few days? Yeah. Yes, please. The problem is also they're really bad. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to condense that into a podcast with slides? Yeah, oh, my God. We can do that. Can I on that one, too, yeah. just for the hell of it? Sure, <laughs> yeah. sure. Fuck yeah, it. Sure. Why not? Um, Vicky, Vicky, back to back. Yeah. 
So once again, the solution is trains or barges or anything that's more efficient than fucking grinding rubber tires against asphalt constantly. The age of sail. Mm, yeah. There have been some interesting developments in commercial sail, but I'll save that for the fossil fuels episode yeah. because we have to go to bed. Yes. <laughs> All of us in the big bed that we share. We have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands for danger. Greetings, November, Liam, Roz, and Devin. Spelled Devin, wrong. Devin with Spelled an I wrong. here. Spelled wrong. Yeah. No, no. Delta Echo Victor Oscar November. Yes, I said November twice. Yes, it's yeah. confusing. That's okay. Yeah, everyone thinks you're named after the month, but we know that you're named after the NATO uh Calls the mm-hmm. call mm-hmm. phrase. That's the Chevy right. Nova. She's yeah. named after the Chevy Nova. All right, Chevy fucking, Nova. let's go, Roz. Doesn't go. <laughs> let's go, Roz. I used to work at an ethanol plant where Thank we you. turned hundreds of thousands of tons of corn into a hundred million gallons of ethanol each year. Uh, I worked at the American Keynesianism factory. The process to do so is stupid, complicated, and involves high pressures and caustic chemicals. Only Americans could make the Keynesianism factory deadly, yes. The plant is held together <laughs> by the most sleep deprived people you could think of. Same. And accidents <laughs> happen. Same. This is about the time I got I got turned into a projectile. But many such incidents occurred, <laughs> such as the time I got gassed by hydrogen sulfide, the time I got gassed by chromaline, which is not mustard gas as we originally thought, and the time I got gassed by yeast. Or the time I briefly became part of a 480 volt circuit. What kind of Nivelle offensive late First World War shit were they doing to you out there? Huh? <laughs> to understand how I became a steam powered projectile, I will do my best to explain this part of the process. Highly distilled ethanol at around 199 proof. That's more than ever clear. Has to be clean. I, I, I know that shit tastes good as hell. Oh, hell yeah. Has to be cleaned of all the remaining gunk. And to do this, it is blasted through thick cotton socks about four feet tall and over 120 PSI. These socks like to clog. (laughs) Sometimes they don't clog for weeks, but sometimes they clog several times an hour. I personally blame gremlins for this. Yeah, I mean, fluid dynamics or whatever, basically the same thing. Sometimes stuff doesn't work as consistently as you like it to. One such night, the sock decided to clog halfway through my nice short 12-hour shift, and I dutifully headed out to change it. The filter bank has two filters, so you can keep one closed until it's needed, and I opened up the feed line, letting 120 PSI of 200-degree Fahrenheit ethanol into the cleaned filter bank. And then I was staring upwards at the starry night sky. My head was ringing, and I was soaked in now very cold ethanol. Excuse me, very, very cold ethanol. Uh. What happened as best as I could tell was whoever previously changed the filter, they fucked up. They didn't put the gasket between the metal lid and the filter body, and even if they had, they didn't tighten the damn thing. I didn't know Boeing made ethanol. (laughs) (laughs) There's no ethanol in kerosene. They need that energy density. (laughs) So when I opened the feed tube, the top of the filter cleverly blasted off into who knows where, but not well, that's before. That's in space now. Yeah. <laughs> but not before directing a powerful stream right into my chest, sending all 250 pounds of corn fed trans woman roughly 20 feet back wait, into wait, wait, a wait, wall. Back, back up, back up a bit, back up a bit. Uh... <laughs> uh, 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 hello, ladies. Are you allowed to forward? Are you allowed to forward her her email address to guests of the show? <laughs> So it's, it's a violation of like uh, podcast submissive <laughs> confidentiality. Podcast HIPAA has to be invented because yeah, yeah, of this yeah. episode. <laughs> November, you have access to the email. <laughs> I, I literally do, yeah. don't I? Okay. 20 feet back into a wall, probably giving me a concussion. When I came to enough to make. To make out sounds, I realized my coworker was yelling at me over the radio that we'd lost pressure. Well, no shit. Another coworker helped me unscramble myself, pick me up off the ground, and shut down the open filter. Dana called maintenance to get a new lid because 
fuck if we were going to find it in a place that now had three inches of standing pure ethanol. (laughs) That was the day I learned that ethanol, even under pressure and superheated, isn't actually very good at keeping a hold of a lot of heat. In the two feet between my chest and the filter, it cooled enough to not turn me into a lobster entirely. Oh, God. Incredible. (laughs) For once, the person who had fucked up got yelled at, and absolutely nothing else about the process changed. I salute thing. Thanks for all the videos. You guys have helped keep me sane in my new safer job of professional pretty blue light staring. What, Job? Don't stare at that. Welding. Oh, okay. <laughs> we just told thank you. Not you to thank stare you for at putting that. that together. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't look at the pretty blue light. Um, Two hundred and fifty pounds transfer, and she welds. Yeah. Okay, yeah. With love, yeah. Ember. Wait, that's part of my name. God, that's a cool name. Yeah. What one of us is going to have to change? P.S. Ethanol is a goddamn scam. Don't fall for it. Yeah, but I want to uh, run. I want to run my mouth. My, my, my I enjoy PCR drinking it. I think it's better than tetraethyl lead as an anti knock agent. I <laughs> <laughs> though I can't we'll believe it's a scam. Fuels episode. <laughs> fossil we'll, fuels we'll, episode. Yeah, we'll, coming we'll, soon. Let's let's, let's do let's it. See. All right. I have a question, really quick. Fuck you. Is it about her email? It no. It it's it's about are we done or no? Yeah, we're done. No. Yeah. Uh, Wait, can I can I no. can I pump my book, please? Yeah. Well, we have to get to the next slide first. Okay. That oh, was okay. Slide? that was safety uh, third. Okay, everybody has been very quiet. Shake hands for danger. Our next episode will be about Chernobyl. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Victoria! I think we do. Sorry, I have one thing. I've worked on it for two years, so I'm really excited to just get it off my chest. I wrote and shot a uh, trans femme fashion lookbook with an automotive theme. Over the course of the past two I've been and excited almost for coming this. up out of half years. And it's finally available for pre order. It will launch in April. You can buy it at my publisher, Career Books. It is a little bit more expensive than I was hoping, but it turns out printing nice pictures costs money. We, we so, will put a link in the description of the sure show. We deserve this. It's by Victoria Scott. It's fucking great. It features uh, cars from Friends of the Pod. That's true. Yes. Yes. It features Friends of the Pod. It was it Friends was... of the Pod. There's car companies. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's genuinely like uh, one of the most talented photographers I know. So thank you. Out. I am Buy genuinely it. It. like so goddamn excited. Sorry. That is oh, yeah. that is all for me. Also, I have a job where I write about cars. I write at motorone.com. If you're ever curious, I write a lot about electric cars. Hmm. I do yeah. a I do an engineering series. So I, I do those about once every two You're weeks. We're not allowed to do that. Only we're allowed to do that. Um, <laughs> I mean, she she releases stuff consistently. Yeah. Uh, do that? I don't know if I'd go that far. I'm a writer. Come on. <laughs> that 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 is that that proves you've gone commercial. You're not authentic if you release stuff consistently. <laughs> it's true. It's true. The people. All right. Wrap this shit. Wrap it. Wrap it. Let's go.